Hello and welcome to session number 70! 7 0! Whoa, it's Outlander's Guide to Ladoria! Hi! Hello! Hello. Hi! Welcome back! 70 welcome. sessions! 70! My goodness, I can't believe you stuck around for this long! We've almost beaten our record. What's a record? Uh, Eberron ended 71. Oh, shoot. Yeah, we're gonna beat that. Unless... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would Unless. you like next week to be done? TPK today. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why would TPKs happen? <clears throat> That's it. We solved the Ladaria. Because of our good decision-making. Oh, boy. Okay. It's Dennis. The answer was the Talix's dad we found along the way. Yeah? That was it? Yep. That does it? Yep. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis! Let me get my notes up on my phone, because that's where I wrote down this time. On your phone? Mm-hmm. That's delightful. All right. Um... <clears throat> The last session could basically be split into three major things that happened. So I wrote down in our server, as an Orangus list, three shinies for Papa, Aaron's reveal, and uh, we play fight with a dragon and almost die. So let me go through those events. So first event, the group is on their way to the mountain. The group is also led by Aaron. And before they start going, Orm asks them to bring some materials back that he'd need. A diamond, Ferrarium, and Estride. And without knowing what either Ferrarium or Estride are, we go to the door, go through it, just to go straight, just to turn straight up around, and go back to Orm to ask him for clarification on what those two are. <laughs> <clears throat> on our way up the mountain, or, well, towards the mountains through a canyon, I guess. Aaron makes ominous remarks on himself, like, you will notice something about me that I can't explain. And the group actually had heard of these kind of bindings before, so Pontifex tries to dive into Aaron's mind to figure out what's up with him. He sees him in chains, and his flesh on his arms slash hands is decaying, so in short, he's a zombie. And our <laughs> collection of... Fantastic Beast is growing now with the werewolf <laughs> and the zombie. <laughs> um, Happy also... <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true! Almost. That's perfect! <laughs> Brooke also checks in on Tekka, and our friend Tekka seems pretty worried. He asked Brooke to take care of Ollie, and especially if something was to happen to Tekka because of his werewolf shenanigans. And from there on, every evening, both of them work on making Ollie comfortable towards Brooke. The third event, because in the night an undead pelican tries to steal Aaron's head, but gets fended off. The pelican seems to try and communicate, and then flies off. Quick discussion in the group is happening on what to do, especially since the group has followed many birds in the past, and it usually ended badly. But not this time, because the group follows the pelican into a cave where they find an undead Yunin and a girl in a white dress and with golden hair. The girl turns out to be named Runa Mela, and she claims ownership over Aaron because he is wearing chains as well. Everything, apparently everything that lives beyond their death can be recognized by their chains, and we have seen that before, especially with the gods we've met. And what Runa Mela does is that she collects those changed things. The group obviously doesn't want to give Eren up, so Tekka comes up, comes to deal with Runamela. They play fight because she hadn't in so long. Her hands are also inside out, and when they start to play, and when they start to play fight, she turns into a dragon with three topazes on her head, and her wings are backwards, which explained why she can only glide and not fly up. The group basically plays with uh, Runamela almost dies because she's incredibly strong until she, <laughs> Tekka does his Tekka shenanigans and the fighting stops. Everyone gets along and 
Runamela decides if she can't keep Eren, she's gonna come with us. And that's where we are. All right. Well, well done. Thank you, Dennis. Now, here's a problem. You have two inspirations. Ooh. Who doesn't have any? Sid has one, and Austin Matt has, has zero. Oh, Matt has zero. Yeah, sure. Matt, do you want to have Sid? I do think... Am I the next recap? You yeah. are. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take... And then I will happily donate mine. Because, again, I don't roll d20s very often. I just make the DM roll on a d20s on account of the fireball. So. <laughs> I will happily yeah. keep one in reserve. You can have it. Cool. Uh, all right, here's yeah, a change inspiration. A change inspiration. Nice. Yeah, when you, uh, when you were describing that, this is like a... a a thing I thought about when you're describing this girl as having inside out hands and the wings are backwards. It's like backwards hands is a is a very notable thing of a very scary 5e monster. <laughs> I was like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> it's like she's a rock shots and dragon. <laughs> what the fuck? Sleep tight tonight. Okay, no. Yeah, no kidding. I, I was a little concerned. It's God. like, I, I don't, I, I hope that isn't what this thing is. I don't want to meta. I wasn't involved in the fight, so it was fine. Uh, you know, you all could die. But I thought it was very funny, the parallels of like, yeah, she has backwards hands. That means she's going to be terrifying. Uh, and that's accurate. Things with backward limbs are spooky. And incredibly strong, apparently. Yeah, it, the the more backwards your hands are, uh, the higher your CR. <laughs> when you're when the final boss has hands and its feet, <laughs> you know it's over for the group. Next time we find a a boss that has backwards hands and six fingers, that's when we know we're screwed. If we find Pontifex's parents and their six fingered hands are backwards, that's bad. <laughs> Turns out they're gods. Oh God. Let's go with this. Yeah, why not? Tra traveling music. Ah, okay. We're going to pick up where we left off. Uh, you guys took a little detour to actually um, end up eventually meeting with Runamela. Uh, so you've gone slightly off course, all right, and assured you that you wouldn't lose more than a day of travel in order to travel a bit further south than you had originally planned to. Uh, and now, with a young dragon following you, uh, pretty much holding onto one of Arian's arms and never letting go, you resume your journey towards the broken rib. Uh, you're letting... Uh... <laughs> yes. Um, you're letting uh, Arian take the lead, who is familiar with the the path, is familiar with the landscape, and is quite comfortable um, uh, traveling uh, on foot. And so, you leave behind the vast, searing expanse of the Bloodstone Gorge. Step by step, you slowly climb up a gentle incline. They are cooling each day. Uh, the canyon with its towering red cliffs fades into a distant memory, replaced by the calming embrace of rolling hills and rich greens up ahead. Once you're no longer climbing up the walls of the canyon itself, Pip is able to once again bring back horses, or whatever animal of the day he, he chooses. Um, so for a while, you're back to making quick, swift, easy progress um, that doesn't exhaust your body as quickly. Um, <laughs> what's that? Is that a type? One what? animal. Why are you muted, Austin? 
three animals. I have summoned an army of tiny horses. <laughs> <laughs> They're, They're like, like Shetland this... ponies. Yeah, 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 the miniature ponies. That's what I was going to say. Um, that's fine. Let me check for something super quick. I didn't put... I, did, I forgot to take out my dice and my dice rolling thing. Yeah, okay, we're good. Uh, that's fine. The very ground you walk on seems almost alive. Each hill rising and falling like a living creature breathing in rhythm with your journey. The air lightens, carrying the scent of pine as you venture deeper into the vibrant landscape. Mountain peaks loom ahead. Far, far away, their snow-capped tips glistening in the sunlight. You travel without uh, any particular interruptions uh, for about three days. The, there will be no need for you to consume rations because Runamela will hunt food for you. Aww. And... Uh, Nice. What she brings back, she every once in a while, giving Aaron a moment of calm, she leaves whenever she complains that she's hungry. And whenever she comes back, usually in her draconic form, she's dragging with her an animal twice her size, usually something massive that uh, Nobody is able to com to completely eat. Aaron does what he can to not waste any food, and he mainly just dries as much meat as he can, makes jerky out of it, and um, you guys feel your bellies on strangely tasting meats. And not necessarily unpleasant, it's just a very different kind of flavor. Uh, there's a moment when she brings back something that looks like a giant scorpion uh, that... Uh, it matches the colors of the canyon you have left behind, the yellows and oranges and reds, and surprisingly tastes somewhat like crab. Mm. Uh, she's... Yeah, Pip's just eating his rations instead. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. Um, she's always trying to uh, either teach Arin her language or just to impress him. Uh, that seems to be the reason why she keeps hunting bigger and bigger prey every time. Uh, and every time she goes away to hunt for food, she comes back a little bit later. Um, she's always heading back in the direction you guys came from in the first place. Uh, you know, she struggles to fly upward. And since you guys are traveling upward, she always leaves by gliding back in the way you guys came from. And then she just climbs back to you guys. And on the fourth day of doing this... Uh, um, in the morning, she sighs in this kind of weary manner and says, I'm getting too cold. I think I want to go back. Uh, no? Is that, is, that, is that an acceptable answer? No? Hmm... I know that they want to go back, but uh, are you okay I to not do that? Get, uh, I would get to spend more more time with him. And she looks over at Darren, who is just trying to take notes in his journal. Over these four days, he has decayed further and further. His skin has lost its color and has become this gray greenish hue. Chains have started to grow out of his wrists and out of his ankles. Uh, he has lost a tooth uh, just yesterday. And right now, as you all turn to look at him, an eyeball pops out of his skull onto his nose. He... Does he seem shocked by this? No, he looks annoyed. He takes this deep breath and then just picks up the eyeball and kind of shakes it off and puts it back. He seems to have gotten... Uh, he's used to his situation. He doesn't appreciate it. But he's used to it. Right. 
Yeah, it's, I'm getting it's too fine. cold, so I was thinking of heading back. And you guys can come visit whenever you want. If uh, if you want, I can uh, warm you up. To be, uh, it could be as violent as you want it to be. <laughs> mm, okay. It could, it could make it easy, uh, or if you really insist, I could make it uh, very, very, very hot. Okay. My uh, home I guess is what, hot. What do you prefer? Um. I very can make hot. a ball of fire uh, that will just be there for a while, and you can, you know, huddle around it, or. I can encapsulate you in a very large ball of fire for about an instant. I want to play with a ball of fire. Uh, and so it shall be. Uh, and I'm going to cast Flaming Sphere. Just good, plain old Flaming Sphere that I don't think he's done since the hearts. <laughs> uh, How long does it last? It, little... it lasts a decent amount, like a full minute. Yeah, like a full minute. Okay. And he'll like, you know, every six seconds or so, like roll it around and basically uh in in the past uh short while uh Pontifact has become accustomed to uh playing with cats uh mm -hmm. and so he's going to this is exactly uh, use this like ball a ball of fire of as if with a cat yeah for, exactly for a cat this is like the you, you just see her eyes light up and turning back into her draconic form she starts chasing this ball around she you, you you've seen her do this so the first time when you play fought with her and in the days that you'll be traveling with her, she can um, do these short bursts of teleports uh, where she'll be able to just disappear and reappear 50 feet off. Uh, and she keeps doing this to catch up to the ball whenever you move it too far from her and, and she can't uh, uh, run fast enough after her. So there is this little dragon gold-colored scales glistening in the sunlight, the three topazes on her head, uh, beautiful and shining. Just this, she turns into a puppy. Goes crazy over this fireball, and whenever it goes out, she just begs Pontifex to make it again. I think, like, over these past few days of travel, uh, the group has experienced for probably the first time in all of our adventures together, uh, Pontifex being relatively fond of a being that we've encountered. Uh, for the most part, he's been pretty shitty to basically everyone we've met and hasn't liked any of them. Uh, but for the first time, I think, ever, uh, he's been actually friendly and, like, is clearly engaging with playing with this creature and has, like, a almost like a little, like a, a grandpa, a proud grandpa glisten in his eye. Uh, Both looking with at the youth the... play around. Both with uh, uh, Brunamela and the Tresim too. Yeah, and Seraphis. He like totally like you know Seraphis tends to like rest on like his shoulder plate or something, and he is like not infrequently will reach a hand up and like give her a good scritch or so. Uh, yeah, he's been like genuinely playing with the uh, with the Tresim and with this freaky dragon, uh, and, and hasn't been shit talking her at every opportunity. Seraphis herself, uh, the party would have seen as being more friendly towards Pontifex. Ever since they've shared that uh, a week of travel together, just the two of them, she has gotten... You know what? It's less friendly and more straight up protective. Uh, whenever a loud noise would spook Runamela, um, Seraphis would immediately be on onto Pontifex, either on his head or between himself and whatever noise uh, had just happened, perhaps uh, uh, a, a rock falling from somewhere, uh, a sudden bird screech closer than you had expected. She always jumped up ahead and made sure that everything was okay before calmly just going her own way, flying back down, playing with the blades of grass. Um, with the... Yeah, I think Pontifex has been smiling, which is maybe good or unsettling. <laughs> with the fireball uh, the, the ball of fire that you occasionally bring out to entertain Ramella, she sticks with you guys for a couple more days a couple more days where food is not a concern a couple more days where at any time anything uh, any large animal any strange creatures seem to uh, be attempting to cause any trouble or sneak up on you 
Renamella always just sends them away. Uh, meaning that you make it uh, easily all the way. Uh, uh, did you funny. say that we were in more of a, a green hillside now and out of the like desolate canyon area? Yeah. Okay, so there's some plants to be had mm -hmm. instead of just the meat that <laughs> she brings. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, but then it would be on this day. Oh, let me let me make sure I can't do it correctly. Nope, one more. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be about here. <clears throat> when even upon the promise of spending more time with Arin, and even whenever she gets to play with the uh, the ball of fire, which at some point there is an upgrade to a straight up fireball. Uh, turns out she actually kind of enjoys that, just being engulfed <laughs> in flames. Doesn't even feel them. Um, right. She's finally ready to go back for good. Uh, the the oh, cold, totally the chills. He actually casts Dragon's Breath on the Tressum, and the Tressum and the Flame Heart is playing. The Tressum just fucking belching flames at her constantly. <laughs> <laughs> That's Accidentally a singeing Orion's hat. <laughs> the Tressum just flying around, like torching the dragon every now and then, yes, but then so also getting is... bored that the dragon doesn't care and like flying off and. I don't know, torching a bird or like a bush, just murdering things with it. This is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> just her full minute of godhood that she enjoys. Uh, Definitely. <laughs> meanwhile, Arn. <laughs> <laughs> it's just decaying. Yeah. Um, and the further he, the process of his decay goes, the more he. Uh, he chooses to cover himself up. He uh, he avoids eye contact and never really takes his hat off. And starts wearing this scarf to hide most of his face. Um, Pip is like right next to him, scar a uh, scarf halfway up his face too. <laughs> Pip just gives a thumbs up. <laughs> um, and so when Rumela once again expresses her desire to leave, and this time uh, she's sure of it and she invites you guys again once more to go uh visit her if you're ever back in the bloodsome gorge um she turns back into her draconic form and she goes up to the nearest uh, tree and starts uh, um essentially like scratching her head against its bark sort of like how, how bears do um until she manages to shed one of the topazes upon her forehead and turning back into her humanoid form she brings the topaz uh, to you guys holds it out to Aaron but speaks to the rest of you uh, as she says you, you can keep this um, to remember me by aww she's given us a piece of her skin the most precious thing I own. And if you don't come back to visit me, I will hunt you down. We'll come visit. We'll be back there at some point. Promise? Right, Virian? Yeah, Virian's gotta do something <laughs> there, but we're we're of av we're avoiding that entirely right now. <laughs> This is beautiful. Thank you. And for walking with us this long. I had fun. You guys are fun. As did I, surprisingly. Be this safe. Nice. Try not to get too cold. Hey, we will likely see you on our way back. Uh, so, uh, that's not true. We'll find another door, but uh, we'll come back and see you. Okay, yes you will. That I'm is going now. Goodbye. <laughs> um, as she declares to be leaving, she just leaves. Traveling back down, half gliding, half hopping down the same slope you have just climbed up. You... Is it 
already getting colder? It's like, noticeably? Been, yeah. Um, it mainly you're back to a temperature. It's like late fall. It's not particularly cold, but it's more about the fact that you just came from the Bloodstone Gorge, where it was very hot. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, temperature noticeably shifting. Yeah, Pip's gonna, like, as it gets colder, he's gonna untie that mulberry jacket from around his waist and start wearing it. Uh, and every now and then the others might notice that, like, he's starting to curl up his feet a little bit more and, like, rub rub them against each other and his little feetsies are getting cold. He's oh. barefoot. Oh. Yeah. Just saying, I still have fireballs. <laughs> <laughs> With, um, actually, this is a good time to, uh, uh, yeah. Ooh. With each passing like day, the temperature drops further, and a chill begins to seep into your bones. The world slowly transforms around you. Trees now wear coats of pristine white, their branches bent under the weight of freshly fallen snow. You're, uh, you find yourselves crunching through white terrain, a soft blanket muffling your footsteps. Nature's contrasts come alive. The deep green of pine trees against the pure white of the snow, the vast cerulean sky above, and occasional bursts of color from resilient flowers peeking through the snow. As you climb higher into what's now proper mountains, the snowfall becomes more frequent, heavier, the sky is more and more often hidden behind pale curtains. Two days after Runamela has left, as your progress is beginning to slow down a little bit, you need more frequent rests, trudging through the snow is taking more and more strength out of you. There comes a moment in um, the late afternoon when Pip, it's mm -hmm. almost imperceptible, but you're, you're always paying attention. Both you and Squeak realize there's a very, very faint shift in the weight that you're carrying. One of your pouches has gotten just a tiny bit heavier. Okay. Um, yeah, Squeak being the one carrying what I'm assuming is uh, Granny's pouch. He's going to look into it and bring it to Pip's attention. Within the pouch, there are two items that you don't remember ever being there. One, colorful, thin, very fragile. B uh, you pick it up between two fingers, what at first you almost thought to be a piece of paper, and then you realize it was so colorful and slightly see-through, and then you realize it's a, it's a wing of a moth, or, or rather of a catella specifically. Just a single wing. Colorful with the beautiful patterns that you could stare at for hours. No sign of the animal it was attached to. Oh no. Oh, Granny. I don't like this gift very much. <laughs> the second item that comes with it is uh, a. Uh, at first, you think it's a rock that has been wrapped in paper, like a gift. But as you remove the paper, and it's a fine rock, it's not the most special one. It's grey, but it has this beautiful red streak that goes through it. Some kind of, uh, just a faintest hint of a metal uh, that is trapped in it. And you look at it, and you almost toss away the paper before you realize that the paper was possibly the important part uh, uh, and for there is a message on it you expected a rhyme a few sentences but it's just a single word tonight
Um... That's... Okay. Pip just furrows his brow and starts getting a very anxious feeling in the pit of his stomach. But he keeps all of this to himself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eventually, after another hour of marching through the snow, Pip, your feet, they're just frozen solid. It's a... You've, you've lost all... They're, they're numb. You've lost all sensitivity. <laughs> it's uh, it's not good. Um, <clears throat> as you settle down for for the night, uh, uh, Aaron begins to work on making temporary... Uh, like, sort of like half socks, half shoes for you. Something that would be... Uh, that would repel water and keep you cold. Uh, what? Not keep you cold, keep you warm. The opposite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aaron. I don't want to be a zombie yet. <laughs> Puts you in the fridge to preserve Pip, you. Pip, his teeth are just chattering as he, he sets his feet in front of a, a green bonfire. Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh, seeing Aaron, he's a... Uh, um, oh, crap, what's the verb? Sewing? Like with a needle? Yeah. Yeah. Like he's putting together fabric to actually like build you these footwears from scratch, and um, you see, there, there's a, he's working with this very straight back, uh, almost holding up uh, his tools uh, like above him instead of in front of him and down, just to prevent his eyeballs from falling out again. Um, <laughs> every day he seems to be struggling a little bit more with more and more mundane tasks. The chains that uh, uh, that uh, uh, are heavy on his arms and legs, they, each day they grow a handful more metal rings on them. And whenever you walk through the snow, there's your footsteps, there's your footprints, and then there's these two streaks that uh, his chains leave behind him. He's beginning to look somewhat miserable. But at no point does he ever voice his discomfort. He just puts up with it. Aaron, do do you do you get more? I don't know how to put this. Is the mountain is making it? you more dead? The passage of time is. But. But what? Why did it start when we left the the um the castle? Did ah. it not happen at the castle? It does happen. It does happen everywhere I go. But I have methods of keeping it at bay. Could you do that again? Am I making you uncomfortable? No! No! I can, but I only have uh, a limited amount. I'm trying to make it last. Sort of like stretching out your rations for a long journey. Oh, okay. I, I just... I just don't want you to be uncomfortable. It's kind of you to be worrying about me, but there's no need. I'll be fine. There's... Thanks for the... Thanks for the shoes. Oh, thank me once they're done. It might be another day. I haven't worn shoes since I was five. Do you not like them? Mm, most of the time they're not very comfortable. I, I like to feel the ground beneath me and a lot of animals, they need to see the tapping of your feet to understand you. Have you never seen but, snow? Mm, mm, just a little bit. 
Like, were you uh, were you born on Plurna? Uh, no, I don't think so. The Zasberg Peninsula has very mild winters. You've never seen anything like this, then? No. I've never been this cold in my life. Once the shoes are done, I'll work on a cloak. You're... You're really nice to me. I, I can see where Talix got it. Pip just looks down. <laughs> I... And Arin also looks away and says, I was never nice to Alex. Well, well, when when we save him together, you, you'll have another chance. Uh, I'll try to make up for it if you'll even want to see my face again. You know, it's... You're very young. It must be uh, difficult for you to comprehend uh, how long uh, uh, my people can live and how different it feels. Before I knew it, Talix was already grown. For me, that had been no time at all. I thought I would have more, more time. Here, put I, um, these on. Let's see if I got the size right. Okay. And he puts up to you these uh, makeshift shoes that are half-built, and he takes measurements and figures that he has to give a tiny bit more room for the toes and gets back to work. I, um... I, I grew up in a place where there weren't any elves or... or... Uh, furbolgs or frogs well that we had frogs but not like the people kind and um you know everyone around me they they grow up like people you know like me but now I've been traveling with people who are hundreds of years older than me. And, um, I already felt pretty small, but... It's a, it's a really big world full of really big people. And the more I travel, the more I see that I really don't know anything. Why are you traveling? Someone as young as you. I, um... I've got chains too, Baron. I'm trying to get rid of mine. He reaches in his scarf and holds out the noose. Baron puts down what he's working on and he extends a hand to, like, touch the noose, but Pauses, as if like awaiting silently for permission to do so. Mm -hmm. And he okay. he reaches up to the rope and feels the knots. You see him just simply try to undo the one uh, at the very end, the next that you're supposed to be able to uh, undo once you bring your next set of ingredients. And you see his fingers failing to get inside of the knot and uh, loosening it it's not his gonna best work <laughs> I've tried everything I tried with my hands I tried gnawing through it when I first had it until my gums would bleed I even tried magic but that was a big mistake I almost died this is my punishment but I'm getting closer the worst part is that 
Like, it's bad enough that I can't talk without Squeak here. But the worst part is that the higher we climb, the harder it is to breathe. It gets tighter every day we travel. How did this happen? I... I've been different since the moment I was born. And where I come from, differences scare people. And I, I was, I was not treated very well and I took it out on them. And I was, I was going to be hanged. And they pulled the lever and I felt my feet fall from underneath me. And right before the snap, flash of lightning, thunder, rain, Granny came to save me. She snapped the noose and took me away, dragging me along by the end of the rope. Took me home. But I, I, I said some very mean things to her when I saw that she wasn't the nice, kind old lady that she appeared to me as before. She had um, purple, wrinkled skin, and uh, she didn't really like it when I when I called her an ugly purple monster. an ugly purple demon. And so she tied my rope into knots and and said that I wouldn't be free until every knot was undone. Aaron listens with uh, this focus expression, mostly not ever changing, but go ahead and roll an inside check. Funny. It's funny, I rolled a 19. <laughs> um, Pip does pick up uh, on the way he's fists clench for, for just just a moment almost shakily after letting some uh, silence pass between the two of you he crosses his arms looks up at the sky and says differences are what make us Beautiful. At times I think that had we just won the war, then maybe I hate matters not. All magic can be undone, you know? It sounds like you have a plan. Do you think yeah. it will work? Well, there were five knots before. Now there's three. And... I get closer every day. But I, I I want you to know it's it it's not all bad either. I mean oh. I I was always special, but I could never do the things that I could do before. I was just just a kid, you know. But now I can I mean, I can turn into an elephant. I can 
I can conjure animals from dreams. I can... I'm strong. Oh, incredible things. I've met plenty. <clears throat> I've met plenty of wizards in my lifetime. What you can do, few could ever achieve, even come close. And you're still so young. <laughs> Imagine what you'll be like 10, 20 years from now. I. I shouldn't have said the things that I said to Granny. She's very powerful, and she made me into everything I am now. And so, yeah, I don't like having this. But she saved me when everybody who was normal and every person of your faith that I knew. Or at least Talix's faith. When they would have killed me. May I ask just one more question? Yeah. Leans forward a little bit. You notice that at some point during the conversation, he seemed to have misplaced one of his fingers. You're... You're not even sure if he noticed that uh, uh, he's missing one of his pinkies. Uh, as he leans forward, he's like squinting a little bit to keep his eyeballs in place. Uh, and despite his, uh, his eyes now looking uh, like fogged over, um, you still perceive his focus as he asks, Where does she live? Near where I grew up. Which um... is... Uh, um, it was Lita. Mm hmm. And uh, you said she's old with purplish skin. Yeah. What's her name? Gran Granny, Granny Nyla. Very well. Thank you, Pip. What? Why? Why? What are you doing? Oh. I... I'm an explorer. I've been all over Ladaria. Maybe someday I'll pass through there again. I wouldn't mind meeting her. Just, uh... Just don't make her mad. I will not. As you have learned, it's not nice to say bad uh, uh, things about people. About their appearance. I will not make mm -hmm. that mistake. My feet are warm now. <laughs> it's almost time to add to bed. Not that I'm I'm not your father. You do whatever you want. Oh yeah, it's it's uh it's nighttime, isn't it? He just kind of awkwardly lets the conversation end. <laughs> And Pip just sort of gets this far-off look in his eye. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, while the two of them were talking, while Arin and Pip were having this conversation, um, Tekka, what were you up to? Uh, I think Tekka would approach Pontifex, actually. Um, okay. So, th yeah. So, I think at this point, like, Tekka is wrapped up in his blanket. Uh, he's, like, used part of the rain catcher to, like, wrap his feet around in leather. Uh, and he's, like, uh, melting some snow in, like, this iron pot to make some water. Uh, and uh, with the, what, next to the fire, the, the flaming spear, probably. Uh, and then looks to Pontifex. I can tell you miss her. And I miss the smile you wore while she was around. Hmm. Uh, it is... I'm sure you're correct, but uh, j just in case, who are we talking about? Runamela. 
Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, admittedly, the days are quieter now, but uh, it was nice. I feel you have changed, teacher. Yes, most things have since we have come here, but uh, yeah, me too. Do you think you'll wear that same smile when you reach that cabin? I hope so. When you get to be my age and you go through the things that I have have been through and you learn the things that I have learned, eh, you sort of have to uh, hope for the best uh, but expect disappointment. So, if I'm fully expecting for us to show up and there either not be a cabin or it be someone entirely unrelated, or it just be a random pair of Vidalkin, which would also be welcome on account of, I don't know if I've ever met another Vidalkin, but I uh, don't even know how I know what that's, that's what I'm called, but uh, whatever, if they are real, then uh, I hope they remember me, and I hope uh, it's a good reunion. Don't know how well I would react to being brushed off. But uh, yeah, I, I, I am hopeful. After so I'm not so... exactly sure what I will do when we get there. If if we see them and they are exactly as I hope they are and everything is great. I'm foreseeing a, uh, a moment of then what? I don't <laughs> really know what I will do. You will find yourself at a point without a clear answer. Which is usually a position I, I revel in. I like the unknown and having a question I can't answer, but uh, this one is unsettling. Never has it been so personal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Tekka is uh, like... He's gonna like crouch down uh, next to Pond. I don't know. Is Pondfix standing or sitting next to like? Uh, no, he's probably like sitting, um, like one leg out and one like crooked, with you know, like resting his hand on his knee. He's like he has a wand in his hand that he's just flicking about randomly, making like little sparks every now and then. <laughs> the fidget, the magical fidget spinner. Just like. yeah, exactly. <laughs> his fidget spinner <laughs> wand that. Uh, He's probably used a few times, like while we've been out, and he's made like, you know, uh, he's done prestidigitations with the light things, and uh, he's like probably repaired a couple of like you know, uh, like torn cloth and whatever from from us traveling through here, and made like some floating lights and the occasional bonfire, um, like his little Swiss Army knife wand. <laughs> but yeah, for now he's just bought some with it. I think uh, yeah. Seraphis is like off on the side, rolling around in the snow. Oh my god! <laughs> like chasing her own shadow. I think maybe that's why he keeps doing the sparks because it like makes a quick flash of light, which makes a quick like it casts Seraphis's shadow on the snow, which then she attacks. Oh my gosh! It's like a laser pointer, but it's her own yeah. shadow. Yeah, <laughs> this is a version of a laser pointer. I'm getting her to chase her own shadow. <laughs> Amazing. Um. Yeah, so Tekka is like sitting down and he's like pouring uh, the water from the pot into like his water skin. And um, first look into Pontifex, then like looking up into the sky that is just like the, the dense snowfall and like this dense cloud layer. You can't see the sky above. <sighs> Sun brings us longing while the stars open our senses. I fear that the scene you have had in your mind for years, for decades, is going to leave you close minded. You must be open and prepared for anything. Whatever will be at top of that mountain. Uh, I will keep that in mind and try to be. 
but uh, I, I, enough about me. I, we, we are on this journey to this cabin on the top of a mountain uh, for me. I am curious, uh, what is your relationship with parents? Do you, do you have parents, do you have siblings, family, anything? I feel like we've been together for a long time and I'm a little bit embarrassed about not knowing. <laughs> that is fair. There is much I do not know about you either. But I know I can rely on you. And that has been enough. If you must know, I do have parents. A father and mother that I love dearly. And that without them, I would not be here today. You can see me and who I am, who Tekka is, which not many on this land do. And if it was up to them, I would have been thrown into the sea long, long ago. And uh, Tekka will like grab his backpack and uh, he will show uh, the drawing that he got. Uh, was that all the way back at Simliolan, I think? Outside Simliolan? I believe so. Yeah. Yes, it was a long time ago. Do you still have it? I, I, I would believe Tekka would take care of it, absolutely. No, I mean, uh, no, I mean you on the table. Like, I think it's in your chest. Oh! Oh, I didn't even think okay. about that. Uh, let, let me, let me check. I'm pretty okay. sure I left it with you. Uh... Yeah, it was uh, that that letter. It's on the back of it. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Ah, uh, yeah. So uh -huh. oh. oh, cool. So Tekka's gonna take out this letter and show uh, Pontifex the back of it. This is from my mother. She drew this because she was worried about me about being out in the world and what the world may do in turn. And it is a good memory and reminder that I have a hope. And I hope you can find something like it. Just... Me too. We this don't know what... On the top of a mountain, this is sort of miserable. Maybe you will have your own drawing one day. Not very photogenic. <laughs> but, uh, it is the eye of the beholder that matters. Everything I've read about those is that they're terrifying, so... <laughs> 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 Great. I prefer yeah. to not look at those eyes, but uh, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. I think. Yes. Uh, I... But uh, thank you for taking the time to come over and. Uh, I don't know, catch up. I feel I... like we don't speak often. No. Especially after you left so suddenly sort of grow accustomed with someone always being in your life so it has changed my perspective on things i there is one other question teacher the, the reason you left in the first place mm. I, I having heard what aaron said about people of this land believing that the gods Ladaria are disappearing that her, the, the lady is not be here one day how how was it to get the news about the, the goat how do you uh, ha handle that uh, I was a bit more impulsive than I usually can be, which is saying something, because I am known to be quite impulsive. Uh, so, despite us being in the, the middle of, uh, frankly, unknown land, 
uh, inside of a magical tower that if anything is left in it, it becomes part of the tower. Uh, I elected to leave immediately without letting any of you know for fear of uh, protesting or you all slowing me down. So I uh, left because it is news that I knew I had to deal with and that you all would not understand. Um, so I took the, the, the portal, so to speak. And uh, I went with, again, hoping for the best, but expecting disappointment. And uh, it, it, it was all a bit hectic. Things moved a bit quickly. And it never really got the conclusion. It was sort of a... There has been a development. And now I have been informed. And no one knows what to do about it. So hopefully you do. Uh, and, and I didn't. So, uh, we adjourned. And uh, I've been sort of... I don't know. I've been I've been too busy to think about it too much. I I know it, the worst case cannot be true on account of me still having uh, my my divinity or you know my access to it rather. Uh, so the god cannot be dead, but uh, perhaps weakened, so as not to provide its power to. All of its flock, but maybe the most essential, which is surprising given how detached I have been from the goat uh, of late. But I still, I still have access. It is weaker, but it is still there. So until that goes away, I will simply keep moving. I feel like if I took the time to pursue it on my own, I would make less progress than I would just haphazardly traipsing through the wilderness of Ladaria because. Somehow, these happenings in Ladaria seem to be connected to the happenings of Plurina, and I wish to know why. And uh, I am of the hope, but expecting disappointment, that this all leads back to my initial theorem, uh, and that perhaps I am not a blasphemer, after all. If you caught any of that. There is much I do not understand. Right. About Palerna. I guess in summary, I, I was panicked and I lost my emo myself for a moment, my logical approach to most things, and I let emotion control my reactions. And it turned out poorly, as when I returned, I was left alone in the woods uh, with no one, or who I thought was no one at the time. But I suppose some good has come of it. Uh, I've grown closer to uh, Seraphis. I have, I guess, learned to to appreciate the value of companions, which I have admittedly taken for granted in the past. And uh, I have come to uh, like my little beard that I always thought was a nuisance. <laughs> It is becoming, and I have this coat that is uh, very convenient for this weather, so. I guess all things are as they should be. Or at least as they are. I guess my only advice is to... Uh, uh, take life's blows as they come to you. Uh, and do not worry so much about preparing for it, uh, only reacting to it. If we could predict all of life's follies, it would be boring. And I am certain you would have found the way to predict life at this point. If there was one. <laughs> Teacher, I am happy you have found a value in a companion. Someone who is always by your side. And like Tekka is like looking down into his backpack uh like <laughs> a snoozing Ollie. His little buddy. Uh-huh. <laughs> little guy. <laughs> and I I wish if all is connected that whatever could save the goat 
could also save her, the lady. That we have one goal. Teka, I gave you my word that no, no matter how this turns out with my parents, with the goat, uh, with the seed, with everything, that uh, I, I will do everything in my power and I will not stop in the pursuit to save uh, those that are precious to you and to all of our friends, and that includes uh, your lady. I... I thank you. The job is not done until the job is done, you know. And I fear the journey ahead is long. At least 11 more of these. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think Tekka will sort of just like look down at Ollie at this point. Uh, yeah, we can leave it at that. Hey. What about Brooke? What is he up to? I do think I kind of want to, probably while cleaning the sword, thinking back on who we just met, and just out of curiosity, check my cast of, uh, my brand of castigation. And see which direction Ruda Mella went. If it's the direction where she came from, we came oh, from. Oh, your brain is still on her. That's right. Um, okay. To be extra sure, you take out your own copy of the map of Ladaria and, like, you. Uh, use that as a reference, and as far as you can tell, based on the direction you guys have been traveling and where she left, and based on your uh, your own understanding of the landscape, she should be heading exactly where she sh where she said she would have, going straight back in the direction you guys have originally come from. Uh, you can still tell that she's moving at this particular moment in time. It doesn't seem like she has uh, settled it down for the night. And as far as your senses are able to inform you, there is uh, nothing really that seems out of the ordinary or that would make you worry that something happened. I think he will <clears throat> just not really smile, but be like happy about it that at least going well, and then go back to course of cleaning and organizing his stuff. Okay. Alright. I suppose that's it then. Let's move on to Pip. Uh, oh. Phoenix is in the way. That's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, he... Hold on, he wants to be on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Very sweet. It takes up an entire arm, though, at least. Hold him. <laughs> okay. So, as night descends and the world outside your eyelids quiet, uh, Pip... For one, you're a little annoyed because there wasn't a tree nearby for you to be on. Oh, uh, in this particular spot where you night. have camped. <laughs> <laughs> and there is this bit of a feeling in the, in, in the pit of your stomach. Um, in your own bedroll, uh, under an extra blanket that uh, uh, Arin shared with you. Um, you hold onto in one hand the one piece of paper and the other single wing and you find yourself gradually succumbing to the embrace of sleep the edges of reality blur away your breathing becomes <laughs> because it's phoenix <laughs> your breathing becomes steady a rhythmic cadence that lulls, lulls you deeper into the realm of dreams 
your mind's eye the familiar surroundings transform they shift gently replaced by a landscape painted in hues of twilight. As the world undergoes this metamorphosis, you watch the moonlight casting this gentle silvery glow upon the land, trees swaying in a hypnotic dance despite the lack of wind, the branches reaching toward the heavens, the stars twinkling overhead, their light flickering like distant memories. The snow, it... it catches your attention immediately for how it has taken this strange, delightful pink hue and well, some part of you instinctively thinks that that looks delicious. <laughs> As you take in your surroundings and you notice the absence of squeak for one, but there is a, a different presence hunched over standing a small uh, distance away from you dressed entirely in black unusually for her looking a little bit smaller than you remember her perhaps bent forward a few extra inches from last time granny stands there holding out a hand and Pip speak in this dream? No. He tries, and... Most of his belongings are not with him, but the, the news is. It's as tight as ever. Pip opens his mouth to say something, but just exhales a little raspy breath of air instead. And then he crosses his arms across his uh, chest trying to keep warm as he slowly trudges through the snow towards Granny. Granny smiles. Roll an insight check. Fifteen. Even in the world of dreams, you feel cold, but her smile has this gentleness to it that you've rarely seen, and it warms you up. As you're getting a little bit closer, she speaks and says, Come, my dear, the stars align, past and present and dreams entwine. Sunset's a gift, a moonlight spree, just for us, my pet. Um, see. Pip uh, feels the warmth of her smile and takes her hand. You take her hand. This, her skin is... It doesn't even feel like human skin. It's so dry that you're almost scared that it might just break off like bits of bark from an old tree you're very gentle with your touch but she holds you with a slightly more firm grip but some at times you have uh, been scared of the way she grabs you this grip of hers it has uh, a strength that doesn't feel hostile her other hand reaches for your other hand and takes the wing you're still holding and crushes it between her fingers as she sprinkles the dusty remains of the wing onto your head and then onto her own. She says, Here comes a time of pure delight. I've saved it just for you tonight. With laughter, games, and stories spun, our special day has now begun. With the wing, uh, the wing's remains uh, uh, touching your hair, you feel lighter. Much, much, much lighter. You no longer feel the snow under your feet that uh, immediately feel warmer as a result. You are taking flight. It is... 
against your will, you can't really control it. You feel like you could drift off um, really easily into the uh, into the deep sky, but Granny holds your hand and she directs you in a certain direction based on um, roll a survival check. Okay. Uh, this whole time, Pip is also trying to contain his laughter um, from just the sensation of flight. He's he's uh, still a little taken aback by Granny's warmth in this moment. The longer she acts like this, the more there's this suspicion that you can't quite shake off even when it's so faint, even when it's so illogical, even when you feel bad for thinking something's up. There has to be something going on. Surely. You haven't even brought all of her ingredients to her yet. She, she must be upset at you, should, isn't she? Mm -hmm. But... But... There's nothing wrong yet. That instinct within you is paranoid, but logically, it's not based on anything. Based on your sense of directions, and based on what Aaron told you, that the world of dreams does match to a degree the real world, that the landscape is still the same, that if you were to look at a map of Ladaria, you would also be looking at a map of the dream world. You believe you're moving to the southeast. That's towards the Zasperg Peninsula. And you're traveling. So, so, so fast. You feel the wind against your face. It gets cold again, but there's still this warm coming from Granny. That manages to keep you somewhat comfortable. It's, it, despite the speed, it doesn't feel unpleasant. This flight doesn't make you feel vertigo. You feel like you're headed somewhere that uh, is not going to be dangerous. The landscape beneath you goes too far for you to really be able to see it, but there's a moment where you know you're flying over the sea, and then over land. And then over sea again. By the time your feet and Granny's touch the ground, you are no longer on a continent. You are on an island. A series of very tall cliffs, almost huddled together as if for warmth. And on those cliffs, there is a city. You can see the waves of the sea crashing against the rocks that are far, far beneath you. You look over at these houses and, at first, they're just weird. Most entrances and windows are circular and doors are rare and the houses are kind of built on top of one another. They're not like the towers of Simliel on just a really tall, thin building. It's multiple buildings on top of each other mismatched in size and shape, and they look like they could topple over at any moment. And what you first chalk up to exotic Lidarian architecture quickly strikes you with that realization. These are birdhouses. Massive, massive birdhouses built on top of one another. And you hear the faint rustle of feathers and the occasional hoot or eerie call echoing through the darkness. You've reached a weird realm where the boundaries between the wild and the civilized blur together into wonder. Ip uh, gives Granny just a uh, a quizzical look as he looks back down at the birdhouses. 
I had an image for this, and apparently I didn't load it into Tabletop Simulator. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'll give me just a second, I'll get it for you. Pip wonders in his mind if this is where Glimmer is from. Uh, ah, here we go. That should be good. Oh. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's very cute. Why is it kind of spooky, Ooh. though? <laughs> <laughs> Giant cliffs li rising like ancient sentinels are adorned with an array of bird houses and woven nests. The structures stacked upon one another forming, form these towering and gravity-defying... Um, structures. Sorry, this sentence was bad. Each dwelling is adorned with vibrant feathers, shells, twigs, and leaves. And despite being nighttime, you see many, many colors. Granny lets go of your hand, gestures up ahead, and says, To a land of birds so vast and grand. Where memories abound like grains of sand. Owls and night jars under black skies swoon in houses high neath silent moons. Now go, explore this magical night where giant wings soar in the silvery night light. Island of joy where hearts take flight. Memories sweet. Ah, <sighs> what a sight. I think Pip just stays hovering there for a little bit, looking at Granny, waiting for the the butt. You're no longer or the hovering. Catch. <laughs> oh, the moment you oh. touch the ground, you're no longer flying. I see. He still just looks at Granny, waiting for the catch. <laughs> she gestures up ahead. Pip gives a slight smile and uh, runs towards the nearest birdhouse. <laughs> okay. There is a light inside. You can see it uh, uh, from through the window and it it's warm and flickering. There is a fire within and you peek into one of the windows. It it has no glass, no bars, it's just a hole in the wall. And uh, you see an owl inside. Big and white, white like the snow you have just left behind, with little black specks. And it's massive. It's bigger than Glimmer was. It's hopping around this building that isn't really furnished in a way that's familiar for you. Um, there is no bed, there is a nest. There isn't really a proper kitchen. There's something resembling a table and chairs, but it's all fit for giant birds. Uh, this snowy owl is uh, uh, preparing for dinner. Or perhaps for an owl that might be breakfast? What what what's it eating? Uh it's a bowl filled with normal sized mice. <laughs> Pip is grateful that Squeak isn't here to see this. And then just gives a little Ooh. Um Hey, I'm I'm Pip. What you What's your name? To, what is this? But no sound leaves your throat. Pip is sad. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Aww. He thinks to himself, that's weird. He tries to make a whistling sound. Your noose doesn't feel any tighter than usual, and yet air is 
really struggling to push through. But you managed to whistle. <laughs> um, Pip just gives a little wave to the owl and then... Yep, the, the owl's attention is immediately drawn uh, towards the window where it spots you and um, the, it, the owl doesn't turn around, just the head does. Yeah, like, just oh. a full 180 <laughs> degrees. Uh, and like most owls, he has this, like, kind of permanently annoyed or angry expression. So for a moment, you're not entirely sure if you just uh, angered it. But then the hoot that reaches you is a greeting. Hello! Are you here for, for breakfast? Pip looks at the bowl full of mice and then a just... A wing gesturing towards it. Mm, Pip shakes his head. <laughs> Politely. <laughs> well then. What can I help you with? Pip looks looks around and then looks back to where Granny was and looks back up to the owl and gives a shrug. <laughs> you, when you look back to see where Granny is, you see that she's moving not in your direction, just elsewhere. Uh, on these very, very unsafe looking bridges that for the most part appear to be have not been maintained in a long time. Um, you, you, you watch until she's entirely across because you're almost certain that a wooden plank beneath her feet will break and she'll fall to her death. But she makes it to the other side. Uh, since you shrug to the snowy owl, um, he, he'll say, "Are you new to Talon's Reach?" Would you like me to show you around? Hip nods. The giant owl takes the bowl of mice under one wing, and while snacking on them, will start leading you around uh, what he called the talent's reach. He talks to you about it, uh, about the most random things. Like, you'll point out where certain birds live, but it doesn't seem to be with any particular order. Um, and you're not even sure if those are birds that he knows or doesn't. Um, he points uh, at uh, various spires and gives you directions on how to get their own food. For the most part, this place isn't really made for a lack of flight. Um, but as you pass by more and more bird houses uh, and more and more nests, you see that the majority of the population here appears to be asleep or be making preparations to, to go to sleep. Uh, and only a few nocturnal birds are still up and about. Uh, is there anything in particular you'd like to try to get the information on or look at? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> without being able to speak to them, it makes it hard to ask questions, mm -hmm. but Pip is going to like jump up and down and flap his arms and see if he can fly again if he wanted to. Try as he might, uh, a flight just doesn't come to him at all. Uh, Pip scratches his head um, and looks looks back at the snowy owl and then if he were to look into look to where his pouch normally is, is it there? Yes. Pip uh, reaches in. It wasn't in there and... earlier at the start of the dream, but it is there now. Oh. Okay. Uh, Pip will reach in and grab one of the more shiny sparkly rocks and hold it up to one of the nearby lights and point at it 
letting it shine in the light. The giant snowy owl will say, Ooh, for me? Um... Hip not wanting to offend the owl gives him the <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you. I don't know what I could do with it. Perhaps if I were to decorate my nest with it, I'll be able to attract a partner. Hip gives a thumbs up. <laughs> At this point, Pip is just, like, so confused at this whole situation. <laughs> it feels like a dream within a dream, almost. Uh, and yet it feels so weirdly real. Less and less <laughs> like a dream. Pip is going to... Um, try and just walk away from the owl and and uh, uh, wave wave goodbye mm -hmm. as if the saying I no longer have need of your services <laughs> yeah and he's gonna try and find Glimmer maybe maybe Glimmer's here someone he recognizes yeah roll an investigation check Fourteen. Fourteen. You wander around for what feels like hours. Uh, many times you f find yourself forced to have to climb uh, just straight up vert uh, vertical surfaces to be able to get anywhere. Uh, every once in a while, giant birds will wave at you and you wave back. Um, and you seem to be a bit of a novelty, novelty to the people who live here, but not a total surprise like it, it seems like these these birds have, are used to, to seeing people occasionally but you don't see anyone else around besides Granny at some point you notice that she's sitting down at a table that is very much made for humanoids proper size three chairs she's taking up one of them um, she waves at you and she is drinking tea and then gestures for you to continue your exploration at this point you are like across a chasm from her. You're on a different uh, cliff. Uh, so all you can do is just kind of wave at her and continue your exploration until you come across a peculiar nest. And you know it within your heart, this is it. This is the only one that is filled with, for the most part, junk. But it's all glittering. It's all metals, golds, gemstones. It's all colorful. Um, there's a sign, like a little signpost on the ground. And there's a writing on it that you cannot read. But it strikes you as a warning. You picture it in your mind, probably. Do not touch. Glimmer herself is nowhere to be seen. You feel like this is definitely where she lives. Mm. Uh, Pip looks for uh, any nearby bird, and if he can find one, we'll point to that nest. Um, you find uh, a. A nightingale, brown with a lighter brown color on the belly, uh, smaller than the snowy owl you were just talking to, but still a giant bird. Uh, it was just passing by, hopping with this satch over um, its shoulder, um, but as you like catch its attention and point at the nest, the nightingale just looks between you and it, and then back to you, and says, Whatever you do, don't take anything from that. It holds his hands up like, Mm-mm, I would <laughs> never. <laughs> and the nightingale nods approvingly. Good, good. And resumes hopping away. 
Um, Pip is going to uh, reach into his pouch again, and he's got a he's got a sensor that he stole from the Church of the Snake when he was <laughs> much younger, and uh, he polishes it up, rubs it, and uh, makes it as shiny as he possibly can before he tosses it into the nest and then walks over towards Granny. Okay. You add to Glamour's hoard. Um, it's going to take you about an hour to get to where Granny is, just because you have to traverse these various cliffs and find the only bridge that leads to the spot where she is. Where there's fewer bird houses um, overall, and fewer birds around to begin with. Uh, you're about halfway there when you are surrounded by four giant chicks. You're not entirely sure what kind of birds uh, these might be. They have this very red um, colored feathers with green stripes beneath their wings. Uh, you can tell that they're, they're chicks, they're small, but still, for you, they are like the size of a very large dog. They start hopping around you in a circle. Uh, Excitedly, just chanting, Would you like to play? Would you like to play? Uh... <laughs> Pip suddenly gets flashbacks to being surrounded by children on the playground. Uh... Unsure of what to do, but then Pip has a realization. He couldn't do this when he was a kid. He's gonna try and polymorph into a... Giant... Glimmer... <laughs> into a uh, glimmer. Into a glimmer. She's a. What is she again? Isn't she a big crow? Uh, no, she's, no, a, she's um, um a magpie. Yes, magpie. Oh, that was it. Big old magpie. Okay, That's yeah, the you. Swooper, right. <laughs> right before all these young birds, uh, you just lean forward. And then you extend your arms out, but your arms are wings now. And then you adjust yourself into a more comfortable position as you turn into a giant magpie. The birds scatter at first. You have become way bigger all of a sudden. But then they return. They're all very excited about, about this development. One of them lands on your head. Race? Can Pip tweet now? Can I tweet? Yes. Race? 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 They... They all freak out. They're in. <laughs> Pip is going to... Uh, fly around the... The... Town of Talon's Reach. Uh, weaving through buildings. Uh, in and around. Free as a bird. He is a bird. Um, at first, you're racing with them. Then they insist on playing hide and seek. Then they show you around, and now you can uh, communicate a bit more freely uh, between them and, and yourself. Uh, and you're actually able to ask a few questions. Uh, they also call this place. Well, for the most part, they just call it home. Like, not specifically their nest. The entire place, they just call it home. Uh, but you get the word of Talon's Reach from them one more time, uh, uh, kind of confirming it. Uh, and now that you can talk in between games, so you're told about stores that are uh, currently closed, uh, things that you can do. There's a giant bird hopscotch that uh, they take you to, and their own swings uh, that accommodate specifically birds, and essentially take you to this park uh, where th there's no houses, just this large section of plants. Uh, nobody is mowing the grass or anything, it's just wilderness. Uh, and you have a grand time. It's odd. You haven't really had a chance to have fun in a long, long time. Yeah, there's... For like the first few hours of the night, uh, Pip 
has just been too worried or anxious to enjoy himself, but after he takes flight as a bird and uh, he just lets go. Eventually your magic runs out. Even then, even in your human form, you still spend some time with these younger birds. Uh, some others join in and every once in a while some of them leave. Uh, you get to know a handful of them and you get to know Talon's Reach a little bit more and um, based on what they tell you and based on uh, uh, your own sense of directions, you would uh, uh, be able to tell. Uh, let me bring up the map. You're here. Oh. Uh. Uh, eventually, you're entirely out of breath. You've been flying and running and jumping and climbing. You thought you were sleeping, but you're... The exhaustion is still building up. Oh, hey, I found where I had hidden my, my image. I did upload it, I just put it in a silly place. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, once you're all out of energy, most of your friends have, uh, new friends have left. You're ready to do what you were doing originally. You're almost forgotten. You make your way back to Granny. At this point, she has gathered a few flowers. They too. Like the bird's ear, they're massive. Like, you, she has something that looks somewhat like a rose, but it's twice the size of a sunflower. And she has a handful of them, and she has set them... So they're, they're on the ground, and they're leaning against the table. And they're still towering far above her. Uh, when you arrive, you're covered in, in sweat and mud. And she lets out a giggle. You've never heard her giggle. That's kind of terrifying, actually. <laughs> I think to Pip. <laughs> sure, T take it however you want. Pip uh, suddenly stops in his tracks and looks at her like he's done something wrong. She finishes giggling, but the smile remains on her lips. She gives a bit of, like, this shake of the head. Um, what little... What few strands of hair she has left. Uh, she has collected them in some in something like a ponytail. Um, besides the lack of colors on her outfit, she's properly, nicely put together. She says, ah, How I smile, so filled with pride. As you roam this town and fly and fly. Tip smiles. She gestures at one of the two free chairs. One of them smaller than the other, that's the one she points at. Uh, it doesn't feel like an order, almost like an implicit question, asking if you'd like to be with her. Yeah, people take a seat. She reaches for this teacup that she has on the table, and uh, with a small circle, a uh, circling gesture of her finger, you can see that uh, a small flame appears in her hand, and she holds it under the, the teapot until there's steam coming out of it. And as she serves you tea, she speaks, and he, he doesn't. You're not entirely sure if she's talking to you. As she says. Memories nestle in every soft downy nook, in the pages of time like a treasured book. So many tales hidden in every crook, in this faraway island forever I've looked. And then, as you take the teacup, she makes eye contact with you, and she says, by moon or by sun, I shall be found. Yet I am undone if there's no light around. Uh, 
There's a flash of recognition in Pip's eyes as he remembers this riddle from weeks ago. <laughs> and then he, he furrows his brow and just looks down into the tea, unsure what to make of it. Does he take a sip? Yeah. How does Pip feel about tea in general? Is this something Granny's made for him before? Uh, this one? Yes. It's very fruity. It's like, um, it's definitely more appealing to a child's palate than, uh, um, other flavors of tea would be. It's very sweet. It's uh, definitely sweetened. And then it would remind Pip of some of those first days at Granny's house uh, where he would he would feel more at home, more belonging than anywhere else he's been. The first sip, it's Oh, it's scalding hot. Burns your tongue a little bit, and the next one, you make sure to blow on it, and... Granny gives a bit of a nod and says, Very good, Aster. Then she leans back on her chair, looking away from Pip for a few seconds, this faraway gaze that is weirdly out of Carter from her. And then she snaps her fingers, and you know to pay attention. That's a familiar gesture. And so you're, you almost drop the teacup heavily on, on the table, nearly spilling up the remaining contents, and you, your heart skips a beat, and you listen. My child, I've seen in shadows deep where fears take form and secrets creep, that werewolf's claws your peace have torn, your innocence lost, your spirit worn. I grant you luck, I grant you might, to stand and strike, to take the night, against his howl your fight is just, protect your friends in whom you trust. However, in whispers, hear my plea, a warning true heed it from me. My sister, beware, her heart's filled with spite, but leave her to me, let me set it right. For anger may rise like a tempest's roar, but promise me this, and promise once more. No harm shall befall her, by your hand or fate. In Granny's own way, I'll set her straight. Yes, vengeance burns in my old gaze. I'll tread the path where daylight strays. Revenge is mine, like the thunder's loud roll. I'll punish her deeds to the depths of her soul. In shadows I'll weave my own design, a punishment just both fitting and fine. In this tranquil night, I beg you to agree. Vow to me, dear, leave her to me. Uh, Pip's hands are shaking under the table, um, but he keeps his eyes fixed on Granny. And he nods quickly and firmly. Granny's shoulders relax. She takes back that uh, more calm and uh, simple position on a chair. She reaches for her own teacup, fills it again, and nods. This was what she wanted. It picks up the teacup again and shakily brings it to his lips and uh, 
lifts it up, uh, brings his face up with it so that Granny can't see the tears welling up in his eyes. He quickly looks away and wipes them and then looks back at her. And if there's a moment where his eyes meet his again, he just mouths the word, Aster? Roll an insight check. Nineteen. Your rolls have been on point today. I just want to say that. Like, look at that. Lowest uh -huh. roll today was a thirteen without modifiers. Wow. Okay. You've been making an effort in the last minute to not sniffle, to not let her see your tears, and so it takes you by surprise when you see hers. She too in the most natural way that she can, turns her head a little bit, pretends to be just scratching her old weary face, but you do see her pinky moving over a closed eyelid, drying it. Seems She seems to pretend to not have noticed. Or perhaps it's more that she wants you to pretend to not have noticed. will not press any further. <laughs> the both of you silently finish the tea. Until as time passes, you look off to the horizon and uh, you notice the sky beginning to become a little bit brighter. Granny takes those flowers that she had set against the table and her hands shake as she pushes against it and pulls herself back up to her feet. She says, The stars, they fade, their tales now told. The moon, it sets in hues of gold. In this charming land, we've had a run. But now, my dear, our time is done. The dawn breaks free with a gentle kiss. It's time to leave, to reminisce of nights like this, so pure, so bright, in talons reach under soft moonlight. Come, my child, take one last flight. With Granny's hand, let's leave the night. For in our hearts, these memories stay as we bid farewell to this magical bay. If we'll take one final look back at Talon's reach and then grab Granny's hand. She produces from uh, uh, one of her pockets with her other hand another Catella wing. Breaks it. Crushes it in the palm of her hand. Sprinkles the remains onto your head and hers and you become lighter than air once again. You begin moving across the sea, across the land, until you return to the campsite. In this world, you don't see your companions, you don't see the bedrolls, your belongings. It's just a location that's somewhat familiar and yet also different. Granny lets go of your hand, but she places in it one of the giant flowers. And she leans forward a little bit more, her back bent even more forward than usual, makes eye contact with you with her uh, glazed over eyes and says, My dear, my child, I must confess, my house is quiet in its emptiness, for in your absence it feels so cold, its hearth less warm, its stories untold. For granny waits alone, you see, her heart is yearning for company, 
So hurry, dear. The focused mind. Those ingredients quickly you must find. Goodbye for now, my dear, my own. I'll be all right, though, all alone. Go with my love, tender and true. Know that I'm waiting to welcome you. She presses the flower into your hands. Hers, trembling, but warm. She lets go of you. And you see... You're in the process of waking up. Everything slowly beginning to blur again. You want to do anything? Is she still there? She's still there, just watching you <laughs> fade away from her. Pip just clutches tight to the flower and... and nods to her. And... He wants to say more, say something, but he knows he can't. And so he just lets himself wake up. When you wake up, the flower is still in your hands. Everybody can take a long rest and that's where we'll take a break. Ooh, oh. Bravo! <laughs> that was amazing! Dang. You had to write a lot of poems. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even read all of them. Wow. Ooh, okay. That was... 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. 10 minutes. <laughs> that was a lot. That was so unexpected. That was powerful. Yeah, that was good. I don't know what to make of this. <laughs> <laughs> I promise that by next session I will have a version of this with snow instead of grass. I just kind of forgot. We do it now. Ah, uh, okay. Snow. Beautiful. Yep. I'm immersive. Um, I will do that <laughs> while, while you guys are... Um, uh, Talking uh, as you wake up in the morning and you're ready for another day of travel. I I don't, well, sorry. I don't know. I'm assuming that people may want to talk to a party, but maybe not. Don't make me push you <laughs> towards that. Yeah, I... Huh. <laughs> I'm not sure he does want to right now. Fair. Yeah. But well, I think uh, the party would tell. Tada, snow. <laughs> the party would tell that something's up with Pip. <laughs> he's uh, he's not his usual talky talky um self. When when you do come across an animal inevitably on on this day, he doesn't stop and <gasps> talk to it. <laughs> no. <laughs> He he probably doesn't even notice it. He's just. I mean, it's no. Uh, <laughs> it's so nice. blindingly it, it bright. Worked. It is so it bright. Oh, oh, is it too much? Well, it's probably too much because of what we did to them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here, I'm, that's that's better. Oh, that's uh, maybe still I pretty put a shiny. Dots. That is Whoop. shiny. Wow. You can, you can change it in TTS lighting. These dots were a mistake. Oh, yes, they were. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's oh, going to be a nightmare. To oh, <laughs> no. Let me get to it. I'm sorry. Oh, no, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to no. be more what like have you snow. done? This is awful. It's snow. <laughs> Oh no! It's like glitter. You can't oh, get rid of it. So <laughs> oh, I guess we're gonna no. click the erase all drawings.
<laughs> delete everything. <laughs> what oh. if you die? But all you all of our, all of our artwork. The... I say we just have this. Oh wait, you have made more. The happy, death. the happy lizard that's been here for thirty sessions. I mean, it's had its own time in the spotlight. It's Is okay. it time? Blank slate time? No. <laughs> no. It's okay. We'll leave them. I'll clean it later. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, yeah I you have resumed. That. There's so much. What, what were we going to say? I'll, I'll work on this while we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Tekka would notice that like Pip is uh, like not his usual self. Like that is like probably a little sullen and like his eyes to the ground as he's walking. Um, I don't know. You, you can tell me, Austin, if that's incorrect. But... No, yeah, totally. Let's. Okay, good. Uh, yes, I think Tekka would uh, walk up to him. Pip, you seem unwell. This cold climate is trialing. Here, I will carry you on my shoulders for a while. Until you feel better. With energy uh, throughout the day. When you say the, the first words to Pip, uh, he's startled at first and takes a sharp inhale. And then uh, after you finish saying uh, that you'll carry him and take care of him and all of that, Pip just gives you a big hug. <laughs> and he he holds there for a little longer than usual. <laughs> It is fine, Pip. We are here on this journey to be there for each other in times of hardship. And I will need you to be strong when I am weak. Do you understand that? Mm hmm Good. I, I just want to go home, Tekka. And I don't even know where that is anymore. That is far away now. Maybe we can find something that reminds you of home. Let's make our way to the cabin. Let's find warmth in this cold. Okay. Yeah, then Tekka's gonna crouch down. Uh... And let Pip climb board. Okay. Oh. Or as long as you're able to attack, are you carry Pip? You have to take more frequent rests, and there comes a moment where you really just can't keep going. But eventually, <laughs> eventually, Sunny, seeing you struggle, offers to be the one who carries Pip. She doesn't really ask if there's anything going on. You both feel like she gets that there's something going on, but like she's specifically avoiding bringing anything up. And after Sunny has a turn carrying Pip, then Arin offers. For the Arin, entire day, Pip doesn't break your hesitate. back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Arin, <laughs> Arin just shakes his head and says, I'll be all right. And one of his arms falls off. <laughs> and no, he, <laughs> with the remaining hand he brings it up to his face and kind of rubs the bridge of his nose and just drags the palm nose across falls his off. face <laughs> and the nose falls off and then he says okay that's it give me five minutes and he collects his various body parts sits it's down on a rock so, so monotone <laughs> it is fine Give it five minutes. <laughs> it is He collects Wednesday. his various body parts, uh, realizes he has lost an ear at some point down the path. It's gone. He'll, he'll never find it again. Um, puts down his backpack. Backpacks. There's like, he has two that are made to go together. So whenever he carries them, whenever he wears them, there's one on top of the other. So they reach far above his head and they reach also really far down his back. Um... And from one of them, he takes out a glass bottle. 
that has water inside. At least it looks like water. It's a clear liquid. It seems to be the, the viscosity of, of, of water. Um, and he... Uh, this, this bottle has like a very wide neck. Um, and uh, Arian takes out a clean piece of cloth and uh, pours some of this water onto the cloth. And then he runs the cloth onto his other arm. And wherever the water touches his body, his skin clears up. It's no longer uh, just hanging off of his flesh. It's, it regains uh, its normal appearance. And he does that over and over, over his hands, uh, over the part, uh, over his shoulder where the arm fell off. It mends back together. It takes him a while to get his entire body to look normal again. And by the time he's done, he's gone through two bottles of this. And he puts away the empty ones back in his backpack. Stands up. Looking like the way you saw him in your dream and like the first time you met him in the castle. The chains are gone as well. The missing ear has grown back. He puts his hat back on. Ties his hair in a ponytail. Doesn't even comment on that any of it. Neat trick. I only have so much seawater. Let's not waste too much time on this journey. Sea seawater? That's, uh... That's what does it. What what's affecting me, it, uh... I suppose by design, it forces me to be in the sea. But in the absence of that, I just take the water with me. How... Can you... Can you say how long you've been like this? Um... He... Takes... Uh, um, a journal, a small one. He has multiple ones. He takes out a very tiny one that he has in his, in his pockets instead of in his backpack. And he goes through the pages. Uh, um... And, like, he gives you the amount of time to the date. So it's been a little bit over two years since he's been like this. You, you know, Squ Squeak can get you seawater whenever you need it. He can? Really? Yeah. Would he? Yeah. It does make well, sense, he, uh, in the cut of being a devil. Uh, when he leaves, he says he goes to the beach. He He's looking off to one on Pip's shoulders, kind of assuming that that's roughly where he should be, as he feels like that's that's where the voice of Pip is coming from, on his left shoulder, uh, but <laughs> speak currently invisible. Uh, so he fails to make exactly eye contact, but he gets approximately the right location, and he says, Would you do that for me? these two bottles would you fill them up yeah yeah no problem i mean it'll take just not even a minute um the bottles are so big that squeak would have to take them one at a time because they're bigger than he is maybe uh, two minutes but, <laughs> but yeah if he wants to he will yeah is he messing with them in any way get getting river water instead yeah he spits in one of them <laughs> no no he, he he just does it okay he can be nice on occasion wow yeah no that really helps all, right. all the assholes are getting character growth <laughs> <laughs> uh otherwise he would have had you know limited time to journey with you guys to the mountain and, and back but um that's Fixes it for him, and he doesn't have to suffer as long just to conserve the the water that he has on him. Um, so, in addition to the entire party kind of coming together to carry Pip for the for the day, for uh, for as long as he wants to, and, and until he feels better, uh, Aaron is also he doesn't emote much, but he's obviously in better spirits. You can still tell. 
I think you're... after like the third person carries Pip, he's like, yeah, yeah, I've had enough. And he'll, <laughs> he'll uh, on this this um, snowy terrain, it's not as good for horses, but he'll summon a bunch of like white feathered hawk bears. <laughs> um, that they can. Who are on. very fluffy. When you summon them, they roll in the snow a little bit. <laughs> and so, uh, you continue on. Until the broken, uh, the broken rib is within view. Whoa. It will still be a while before you can get to it, but this one mountain, you don't even need our own to point at it and say that that's where you're going. You can tell. It's almost twice the height of all the other mountains surrounding it. And it comes from the lowest point of the valley. So it looks even even taller because of that. Outside of that, though, it is just a mountain covered in snow. It, there is nothing where at a glance you would look at it and think... Yep, that's cursed. That's a dangerous place. Uh, nothing really. <laughs> it's a normal part of the landscape. Just another mountain. Your footprints behind you mark this path you have chosen. It's evidence of your journey through the landscape. And as you ascend further and further, you can almost hear the world around you. Nature's melody of tranquility and life. It's quiet. It's just a you and the world around you. The next couple of days, you do need to count down. Uh, for those of you, you know, beside people who haven't been doing so, uh, you will need to count down your rations, uh, including yesterday, so three days worth of rations. At which point, you would be at the base of the broken rib. Orin takes you a... Not all the way around, but a little bit, knowing that there is a path, uh, not a not a traveled one, simply a spot where the incline is more manageable, an easier walk, uh, an easier beginning to your walk up the mountain. And as you're in the process of just going around the rib, you haven't started climbing up it yet, you're faced with a decision. Most of you are thinking about it. You haven't quite voiced it yet, since you've gotten this close to your destination, and then there comes a moment when you are confronted with it. Aaron is pointing up ahead where he claims that's where your climb should actually begin, but you notice something before that point. A spot where the landscape is obviously no longer natural. Something that looks kind of like a cave entrance, but definitely not one that has come about naturally. It looks like he was dug, much like the place where you found Runamella. As if claws, massive, have dug this hole into the mountain. And you all pause, it, it, you, all, you stumble upon it really close to it. Almost feels like it appeared out of nowhere, but there, there's no actual evidence of that. There's a bit of a feeling, a chill that goes down your spine. Not because of the cold, but this sensation like you've gotten close to a dangerous wild beast. It's hard for any of you to put into words, but you can sense something coming from there. The group halts. You look at the cave, you look up at the path that Aran has pointed out, and you look at each other. What would you like to do? You know, uh, we don't... We don't have to climb. I don't see a cabin, do you? We could just leave. After all this way... And you give up now. I'm just saying it is an option. It because that is a bit of a daunting climb, and I'm not exactly in the 
the physical prime of my youth and it will be difficult and, and unpleasant and, and cold. It's okay, we'll help you. I don't know, Professor. I'm quite heavy. Professor, you all carried me. I'd be happy to carry you. Never mind, I take back what I said. I want Pip specifically to carry me. <laughs> I yeah, I can turn into like a uh like a like a like a giant giant bird and like oh, I, no, take you, you all up one by no, one. I'm allergic. <laughs> to to birds? Uh to We've met so birds. many birds. No, just the big ones. You're lying to me. I am. I am not allergic to anything. Vinegar. On the cunt. Uh, wow. You know, yeah. let's just, let's just bring up childhood <laughs> trauma real quick. <laughs> of all the times, Pip. Wow. Um, no, that is not allergic. Oh. I, I don't react that way when I touch vinegar. So. It is because it is different. It is like acid. Anyway. Um. We can go up there. But there's something we should think about first. Um, Not doing it? Well, more like delaying it. Because... Because this place is supposed to be cursed with really bad dreams and Pip looks to the cave. I think I have a pretty good idea of who's been doing that. Who? And the how? Granny's sister. She's a She's another witch, I guess, and and she lives below the mountain. And that's where the werewolf is, too. And, um... But your granny has a sister, and this sister happens to be where we are going, which happens to be under the mountain that my parents supposedly live on. <laughs> yeah, she cursed it. This sounds like a... a a manifestation of a child's imagination running wild with what is I don't know the coincidence is too big I'm not I'm not lying I'm telling the truth no I'm sure that you believe it professor granny granny visited me in a dream last night and or you just dreamt of your granny because you were haunted by her. N you know she can visit us in dreams. You've seen it. Okay, fine. And, and what was in this dream? Besides telling you of the sister under the mountain that you're just now telling us about. If we go down there... She's giving us permission to take out the werewolf, but we can't touch her sister. But maybe we could ask her to not curse us if we go up the mountain. Is this a concern? Is this necessary? Why, why would she curse us? It might not just be, like, us specifically, but this whole place is supposed to be cursed. If these nightmares are a threat to your parents, Pontifex, we should explore this. Uh, yes, we should, we should. We should definitely divert the direction of where we are going and put it off for a later date. Just just until we can figure out if we can stop the curse from 
I mean, it could be really bad if we try to go up right now. Right, no, I agree. We should do that instead. Are you professor, actually you, okay you, with this, Professor? Uh, yeah. Yes? Okay. Uh, Just... How long have they been up there? <laughs> uh... I don't know. Likely a while. They can wait a while more. I, I have lived hundreds and hundreds of years. I can go another day. Or two. Or a week. Or a year. That is not an option. Well, however long this takes. I don't know how long it might take. I've never seen this cave before. I haven't been inside of it. Do we know where it is? Do we know where... where... her sister is? The cave. It's right there. You, do you not see it? What the... He's gonna squint real hard, old man style. <laughs> <laughs> We've, like been you were looking stand, like the, we've been standing next to it, it for... It's because you're in a circle talking to each other. Bunfax was the one with his back to the mountain. <laughs> what? Oh. Yeah, we're like oh, right at the entrance. That's also a little bit of snow blindness. It it up. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, my eyes were sunburned from the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you aware of... Uh, and Aryan gestures at the cave entrance of Ladaria's uh, uh, of Ladaria's uh, caves, the the entire underground system. Like what? a Ladarian underdark, like a dark place that is under other places. <laughs> um, small out of character note: there is no underdark in in Plurna. Yeah. <laughs> just okay. Just it's making sure. Joke. Um, I thought that's where all the gnomes live. <laughs> In the deepest <laughs> hole of Plurin that they could find. <laughs> anyway. I haven't it charted... Be under the uh, dark when we bury it. I've not even charted a quarter of uh, the underground landscape of Ladaria. There's plenty of stories about giant monsters carving... Enormous caves underground. You could supposedly, I haven't tried it, but supposedly you could travel from one end of the continent to the other and never see the sun. Oh. So was it more than just the Nahadra who, who made the tunnels? That's correct. The Nahadra is more that they moved in into the ones that already existed expanded upon them. But the majority of the work was done by... Well, I wish I could tell you what. It's just mentions. No names. No descriptions. That's... That's pretty spooky. That uh, hole, far to the east of here, that goes straight down, that also was made by a creature. The width of the hole itself. Um, Supposedly, that is. Well, b before we go in the cave, what's our what's our plan with the werewolf? He's not gonna stop hunting us. Well, does the werewolf not have the acorn? Or the leaf, or whatever it is that makes the tower. He we has one, back. right? Yeah. And, uh, and he's not going to stop. And I mean, we we killed his family. Why, why are we getting uh, conscious about it now? Well, because there is another option. We could kill him, but also I could... 
I could just take his powers away. Make him not a werewolf anymore. And I'm sure he'd still hate us, but what would he be able to do about it? I'll take your bending away. <laughs> <laughs> well, as someone who is not a werewolf, speaking to another person who is also not a werewolf, uh, I would not want either of us to have a vendetta against the group. Uh, simply taking away this uh, affliction may be a temporary solution, but if there are other ways to be dangerous. So I need, like, to make a point. People. Sorry, oh. I talked over you. Could you repeat that? Because um, he has teamed up with a witch before to gain more powers, right? That's why oh. he's here. So what would stop him from making another deal? Acquiring another power? I mean, he's already he's given his anything. whole life. What more could he give? Hmm. I had given the majority of my life as uh, in service to the goat and then as a theologist and lecturer and professor in academia. And then for this last brief stint of it, I decided on a whim to devote my time to learning arcane magic. And in such a short amount of time, I am where I am now. And that is with no uh, motivation of hate, which I've heard is much more powerful than the motivations of curiosity. So it, it, this might not bite us now, and it might not bite us soon. But uh, unless he is very old and has little time left to live, it will bite us eventually. Power is easily acquired in this world. Sunny, agreeing with you. She, oh, 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 sorry, ow, ow, Phoenix. <laughs> she like <laughs> swings her enormous weapon, puts it like, holds it over her shoulder and says, he doesn't even have to get any magic. You can hurt people really easily if you really want to. Correct. I don't really know if I want to advocate too. for violence, but it sounds like he's been a problem for you guys for a really long time. At the very Any least, we should sneak you know, a knife into a sleeping one. So, can't we uh, catch him, lock him up somewhere? Where? Anywhere. I don't see a prison. I, um, there's something I don't understand. I mean, witches are pretty powerful. I. But he chose to make a deal just to kill us instead of making a deal to get his family back. Maybe that's not something witches can do. You're saying he needs a priest. Um, I mean, if he wanted to make a deal with a devil and a witch, I know that devils <laughs> can bring people back from the dead. So, like, gives his life to a witch and his soul to a devil. There's, like, nothing of him left. It's certainly a novel idea. I don't know. Guess we'll see what happens. I mean, if you want, you can try to talk to him, or we can try to talk to him one last time. And if it's sure that he won't let off of us, we'll probably have no other choice. I don't want him to hurt us. Again? Well... Should, um... Should I make a reinforcement? And Pip holds up the, the bag of rocks. <gasps> huh? Something to help us before we head in? Yeah. 
Pip is going to bury a rock. <laughs> in the snow. Roll a d100. Oh my god. Please become a snowman, Pip. Oh, <laughs> <gasps> 100. Oh, I think snap, that's the first okay. time I've ever rolled a 100 on a d100. Oh, uh, oh. My god. Oh no. <laughs> To become a werewolf. There is no fucking way you just did that. Oh, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> You've become a mountain. I cannot believe this, okay? All right, so we're sticking with it. Uh, <laughs> what the There's did? only one possible outcome that would be very bad, and the professor would try to murder you out of jealous rage. Okay, <laughs> so. So, assuming it's not that one, we're good. Out of the snow, the rock re-emerges. It's in a different shape now. It's in the shape of a single long stone blank. It's a rectangle. Thin, made of stone, smooth, um, pretty polished. And it's about 10 feet long. And you stare at it for a moment. That's not a stone pip. That's just a slab of stone. And you, in confusion, you kneel down to pick it up. It's so heavy that you can't lift it. No, it's not heavy. It's planted into the ground. And as you're touching it and looking it over for a few seconds in confusion, another plank grows out of the first one. Oh. Outward, attached to it, slightly more elevated and slightly at an angle. And then another. And then another. And then another, and oh. another, and another, until oh, I don't know a what I did. stone spiral staircase is taking shape directly in front of you. Oh. Enormous. <laughs> and it keeps going up. Guys, what did I do? And it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going. I thought it would be another me. I thought it would be a rock pit. What did I do? <laughs> Tekka, what did I do? Brooke, help. Oh. You guys just watch as the spiral staircase, complete with a railing, it's somewhat safe. Keeps growing until it has disappeared into the clouds. Well, maybe shortcut the... to your parents' house? Yeah, maybe there is an easy way to your house. And I am concerned and confused, but also cripplingly aware of that magic is rarely permanent. I would hate to be a day's travel up these stairs only for them to decide to leave. But this is incredible all the same. What have you done? I don't know. I'm gonna go find out. I'll be back. BRB <laughs> <laughs> dashes into the sky. Forget what we were doing. Thousands of flights of stairs. Our plans have changed. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the werewolf. Forget He's the witch. To heaven. Forget your parents. <laughs> I'm going to find what's at the end <laughs> of the staircase. <laughs> it's far to breathe. Where he go? How many stairs till he runs out of stamina? You guys look like dead. <laughs> That's pretty good. Are the rest of you going with him? <laughs> <laughs> I will fall on a very deep, exasperated sigh that's clearly so that everyone can hear it. And then I will start to hobble my way up these stairs. Oh, I God, can't believe you had just decided to go underground and then you roll at 100. <laughs> How wide are the stairs? At 15 feet. Okay. So I'm not stuck behind what point effects. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> you can overtake other other people. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just when... Blocking people from getting past them. No. Just when I tried again. to no. cross 
to overtake you, just push no, me down excuse the stairs. Me. I'm sorry, excuse me. He's just waddling back and forth, trying to get out of the way, but actively getting in the way. <laughs> I'm sorry for derailing the campaign, guys. Oh, no. That's okay. <laughs> Well, if we spend the next 30 minutes climbing stairs, then that'll be a great session. <laughs> <laughs> the climb is certainly easier than it would have been to trudge through snow and climb scale actual stone walls. It The only discomfort from this climb is that it gets colder really quickly. And you tire rather quickly, but you're free to take regular breaks. There are no monsters on this staircase. There are no wild animals. There is no food to be <laughs> gathered, so of course you rely on, on your rations. And your climb continues for as long as you're capable of going until you, you're out of stamina entirely. And you figure... You try to figure out how to set up camp. You can't start a normal campfire, but Pip has his magical fire that doesn't really require tinder and wood. And you guys just distribute yourselves across the staircase, some of you above the others. And the steps are not wide enough to be comfortable to set up a, um, your uh, your bedrolls here, especially for the Fairbogs. For them, it's just they have to sleep on their side, and uh, <clears throat> at some point, after like during the night, multiple people just rolling in their sleep, they start going down the staircase. And at some point, you all <laughs> tie yourselves uh, to prevent this from happening again. So, your sleep isn't the most comfortable, and uh, it's not very warm, and you wake up sore, and you end up sleeping a couple of extra hours to kind of make up for the quality of that sleep. <laughs> yeah, just rolled all the way down. Uh, but the following day, you resume. And you climb, and you climb, and you're... It's not even noon, and your legs are already very tired. You take more regular rests. You take longer rests. There isn't really any animal that Pip can summon to assist with the climb. But all in all... Compared to what scaling the mountain would have been like, this is simpler. It has a different set of challenges, but it's doable. The problem is that you don't really know where you're going. Or even if there is anything. Because you still can't see where the staircase goes, it just disappears into the clouds above. When, um... When you first planted that rock, you were at the base of the mountain, but because the mountain becomes narrower at the top, you're effectively going further and further away from it. Uh, Pontifex, the higher up you go, the harder it becomes to uh, every for everybody else to breathe. I don't think it would affect you. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, it wouldn't get any harder to breathe through your skin. Right. Uh, but you instead feel a different kind of discomfort. This feeling in the back of your mind. You're getting closer and closer to the realm of the dragons. The place where humanoids are not supposed to go and the place where you had a bad time. And yep. so, as you struggle to climb up the stairs, usually your attention is outward. Towards the sky above you, to your right, to your left, always making sure that there is no dragon sneaking up on you. And up here, it's the only sound you're hearing is the wind. There isn't a single bird who can reach where you are, whose uh, flap of the wings you would be able to hear their songs. So you figure that if at any moment you hear something flying, you, you would know to take it very seriously. But at the moment, it never comes. You keep pl climbing higher and higher. You rest for the second time. You're just below the clouds at this point. Orion warns you to cover yourselves even more the following day to just, uh, as it 
will get even colder and it would be like diving into water. Uh, Pip, you would have always thought that clouds would be this kind of soft, cotton-like texture. And you learn in this occasion that that's not the case at all. Uh, it sucks. It's just as, yeah, it's unpleasant. You were excited about it, but now you're just cold and miserable. <laughs> For a while, you can't even see where you're going. So you can like, barely see the next <laughs> step ahead of you. Let me just say that, like, for the first day of travel up this staircase, Pip was ecstatic. He was like, <laughs> like the first one climbing upwards and pointing out all the different things that he could see off in the distance and just being like, come on, guys, come on. And then the second day of travel, like, as the day goes on, he just starts, like, hating it. Just, <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Just an endless staircase. <laughs> there was this a moment where he started one. doing the thing, like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? But now you kind of yeah. want to turn back. He's it, starting to worry that this may not be worth it. You know, you could get back to the ground very, very quickly. <laughs> I know. But no, this isn't so bad. I actually welcome the monotony. It reminds <laughs> me of my days at the libraries. <laughs> For those of you who can see the poetry in it, it is calm, it is safe. All of your worries are somewhere far, far below you. <laughs> Do we, um, I guess uh, going up the staircase, Pontifex would obviously have the, the dragon thing on his mind. Uh, and that like irrational level of paranoia of like, they can feel me coming. I'm like on their, I'm like their, their no fly list or something uh, <laughs> but, uh, the professor would uh probably like obsessively uh every time that he rounds the staircase in that same side uh be looking towards the mountain to try to spot the cabin you did so for the first two days um yeah and there for for those two days so roll a perception check okay just one check yeah, just just the one. Ooh, first roll. Make it a good one. Nope. <laughs> no sign of civilization. Not at all. No buildings, no people. At first, on the first day, when you were still somewhat close to the slope of the mountain, you could see animals, large ones, and then even those, they're just too far for you to see. This feels... it's just pure nature. No smoke rising up from perhaps behind the mountain compared to where you are. And then eventually the clouds engulf you, and... Well, if there is anything to be seen, and it is beyond your sight. You might be the only person comfortable with how um, uh, wet your clothes have gotten. Almost feels like you're underwater at this point. Uh, but that doesn't exactly bring you comfort. Uh. You remain paranoid, and you remain worried, and you wonder just if there even is anything left to be found up there. The very top of the mountain, you know, it's very far away from the staircase at this moment, even without being able to see it. You climb, and you climb, and you climb, and then you're bathed in sunlight. It's somewhat sudden. The moment the clouds are no longer gray, but they start to turn yellow, uh, white and then golden. You push through the final layer and you are above them. You can see so far all around you, although there isn't that much to be seen. It's all just clouds. You found, finally, the sun. It feels, in a way, almost really far away 
you don't really feel okay. its heat at all, but there it is. You're finally able to estimate the time of day. Uh, it's almost directly above you, a bit further to your right, so early afternoon. And the landscape, clouds all around you, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Empty but beautiful, a, a view that is really just reserved for the dragons. And as you take a couple more steps on the spiral staircase and you turn around, there's the tip of the broken rib, piercing through the clouds, still reaching a little bit higher. Your staircase ends here. The final step is wider than the others. It's more of a, it's more of a square platform, big enough where all of you can stand on it. You are at the top. There's nothing but clouds all around you and the very tip of the mountain ahead of you, far out of your reach. The last people in the group catch up to the rest of the party. You all gather and you look you're shivering, cold, miserable. Finished your climb. There's nothing up here? Clouds. You know, I'm actually sort of happy about this. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. Did we just walk for two and a half days, climbing a staircase to nothing? Uh, I wouldn't say to nothing, but... Uh... It is beautiful, though. It's nostalgic. N nostalgic. Yep. Nostalgic. I don't know what that means. Um, um it brings back memories of being here. Of being above the clouds, yes. Oh, when you were a dragon. Yeah. Okay, so to get from here to here, Pip draws a little map in his mind. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. Are we are we above the top of the rib? You said the rib reaches further up, but you're oh, very so close to the top. Okay, it, it still keeps going. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is approximately a... right. Uh, maybe a little bit further down. Like, there is there is a bit more mountain to go. I could be a, a bird. I could carry you. We can just skip the whole curse. The whole mountain. Everything that <laughs> God had well, planned for us. Don't think it's the wrong <laughs> way, but uh, I'm not entirely had... inclined to believe everything that your granny says, and I would much rather see if A, my parents are even here, and B, if they are, perhaps they are friends with this uh, sister. Maybe this isn't a curse, but a ward. As you can imagine, I had prepared for you guys to climb the mountain, and I had prepared for <laughs> you guys to go into the cave. I had not prepared for this. <laughs> you can Somehow I didn't on. see it coming. You can count on us for that. How far away is this roughly? So I am really bad at like distances and estimating things like that. But if you're asking for the purpose of possibly like polymorphing into a bird and flying the party across. It feels like something that people would be able to do with one or two spell slots. Gotcha. Polymorph is a one a day. You thing have to have a one me. per day, yeah. So like, you know, there's that uncertainty. Maybe you can do there it. Is the fly Maybe some, some half today, the party will be left behind for well. a day. Yeah. 
Is there any way I could be made faster? Uh, yes. Oh, sweet. How? Uh, and Pontifex is going to look at Arin. Just for a minute. It can help. Otherwise, uh, do you all remember a long time back when we first met and we found the grave site uh, or potentially of Jamuel Fleetfoot and there was the crevice with the ladder and I elected to not use the ladder and took a lot of you with me <laughs> and I slowed the, the fall. Mm -hmm. I can still do that. Uh, I don't know if it... So take us so, as far as we can go and then fall? fall. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know oh. if... Oh, right. you're saying... Like, go like this? Or simply... If we leap, I don't know if it will do like this. If there is a... If it mm. descends or if it just kind of droops. Right, so <laughs> if, we're, if we're going like as fast as we can, like up here... Right, and then the spell ourselves. runs out about right here, but then we're still going at a pretty fast speed. But then you feather fall us, we fall slower, but we're still going fast in the same direction, uh, subtracting air friction. What? Maybe we fall around here. <laughs> <laughs> Only problem is if it gets really windy up there, <laughs> then we're gonna fly away off course. <laughs> Another so area the DM hasn't deep prepared. Deep <laughs> the alternative deep is that yes, you take some of us and leave the others. What is the largest flying? animal that I know I can turn into. Did I? Did I? I came across larger birds. Birds larger than Glimmer at Talon's Reach. Yeah? <laughs> I like oh, this sorry. one morph into that dude I met. Sorry. In my dream. <laughs> there is sorry a for a moment I thought you were like a talking in character. Um, the biggest bird you would have seen in Talon's Reach um, roll me a d20. Just a straight d20. Okay, the biggest one you would have seen um, during during that night would have been uh, about like... Uh, oh, how do I word this? Hello? How do you say it in English? Like 150% use... of the size of, uh, okay. <laughs> of Glamour. I'm trying um, to think if I should use inspiration on this role. <laughs> <laughs> Would higher be better? Do it! Okay, I'm gonna use pumpkin inspiration <laughs> on, on a roll to determine the birds I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> this is very pink. I have a meme for this. <laughs> 13. Say again, you weren't okay. prepared. Well, it's about the same answer. Uh, why am I not uh, seeing your role? It's, I, it's a... Oh, it's right! A Sorry, I used this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I've described the glimmer as like about being horse-sized, right? Uh, Sure. Yeah. Um, like so that. this would be bigger, like yeah. really treading the line between uh, like a large and a huge creature in D and D terms. Uh, uh, between yeah, a two by two and a three by three. Yeah. <laughs> it's so like a like two and a half. Fifteen by two and a half. feet tall bird. That's a big bird. That's a that's a big bird. That's like two Charizards. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, three. What? Yeah, Charizard's only like five foot two or something. It's really, really? funny. Yeah, Charizard's really small. <gasps> <laughs> He's like comically small. 
I... okay. I had to look it up, not because I think you're a liar, just because I had to see it with my own eyes. It's and it really is indeed weird, yeah. five feet tall. I would tower over a Charizard, and it's really I... funny. Oh, sorry, it says it's, it's canonical height is five foot seven. Oh, I whatever. am shocked. But the point is, I thought it was so much bigger. Wow. Okay, so like two okay. and a half Charizards. Which sounds bigger than it is. I, what kind I, of I bird do... was it? <laughs> ah! <laughs> the Charizard bird. Let's see. It was a night hawk. <clears throat> Let's go with hawk. that. It looks pretty cool to me. I like its feathers. It was a night hawk and it was absolutely massive. Like they sh obviously should not be anywhere near that size. Is it challenge rating eight or lower? Yes. I can be a night hawk. <laughs> Giant so here's the plan. Uh, I take I take everyone with me and Aaron holds on to my little talon and he, he pumps <laughs> his his fast making spell every minute <laughs> for as uh, long as possible. So that's haste, right? And it comes with oh, like a little oh. downside <laughs> and he can do it twice. Nope, yes, he can do two hastes. And because haste doubles your base speed and gives you the ability and to you dash, can dash with, twice. The, uh, uh, with the extra action, yeah, it is like yeah, it's a lot. Triple That's your speed. Fast. Um, yeah, so like two minutes, uh, one turn of plummeting, which will be scary. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Oh, <laughs> Just fly what up is high free enough. Fall? Is it five hundred feet in a free fall? You could feather fall that turn, essentially. That's funny. To reduce oh it. Oh my goodness. So, haste, uh, feather fall, haste, and then feather fall for good, just gliding towards the mountain. This and is hoping the that... most D&D &D session we've <laughs> it had. It really is! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is the what is the fly speed of a night of a giant nighthawk? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to calculate the actual feet. Okay. Yeah, but I'm like curious. Could. I'm curious just to know exactly how fast I can go, though. I don't know. <laughs> Is it sixty? <sighs> Usually, okay. it's around right. sixty. <clears throat> Give me a moment. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go, uh, and we're going with uh, this. What's the highest challenge rating you can do? Is it eight? Eight. Okay. Ah, okay, naturally. So we're going with 80. 80? Yeah, base movement. So with haste, that's 160. And then I can dash twice. So it's 480 feet per round. 480 feet per round. 10 rounds, and then one gone. So times 10 divided by 11 would be an average of 436 feet per round. Per yeah. Haste. So nearly a mile per minute. Uh, which is 60 miles an hour. <laughs> we math. Oh, sorry, for all of you Europeans, it's a weird number, but for us, it's, it's basically exactly one mile per minute, and you guys are going to be on decimals because your system is dumb. Oh. You use systems that work in base 10. That's dumb. We How use a system that's based 60 on miles 5, per hour feet. Are 96 and a half kilometers per hour. Yeah, that's a good speed He's right a, there. Yep, it's a fast bird. <laughs> Perfect. You guys are Let's sitting do down, like writing on the back, uh, drawing on the back of a piece of parchment, uh, like figuring out that with the help of Aaron and Pontifex's Featherfall and the Pip's ability to turn into this giant bird, that apparently he's 
saying that I he has saw it seen in a dream it. once. It's like, yeah, it's like out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you, you see just Sunny like looking back down at the staircase like she's just considering going back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then the three of you are like so convinced that uh, yeah, yeah, this is a good plan. You're gonna, you're gonna do it. Uh, and Pip, as promised, turns uh, into a bird that is even bigger than Glimmer. Uh, you, <laughs> you've never seen a Nighthawk approach anywhere near this size. Uh, and. Pip leans forward, letting people climb on on his back, however many can fit there. Uh, Sunny just takes a step back. She holds up her hands and says, I, I can't. Can't? I'm scared of heights. This sounds like a... I'm sure you've, you've thought it through, but I... No, 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 no. Sunny can understand animals, right? Oh, she can. She's a furball. Pip goes... I don't know if any of you could hear no, that. It didn't come through, no. 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 Your microphone was like, this is not a sound. Ridiculously <laughs> loud screech. <laughs> which which <laughs> to, <laughs> to her ears mean, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, God. No, no, she takes a couple of steps down, down the spiral staircase, just throwing her hands up in the air. Uh, just, she refuses. And like, uh, with the rest of you being ready, KP just natural into your talons. Yep. Here we go. I got, I've, and the I've entire got... time she's going to be screaming. <laughs> one, in, one in each talon, two on my back, one in my mouth. Here we go. <laughs> Who's in your mouth? Uh, the dead person. I'm so glad you didn't bring your, your horses for this. Yeah. Uh, the Tresim just clings to your tail. <laughs> Despite being able to fly. D not this <laughs> fast? Right, right. The wings are spread wide, but she's not doing any of the leg work. Yeah, Pawn Effects could just literally snap her out and snap her back in later, but I don't think he's done that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's done that in a long time, actually. Yeah, ever since, at least ever since he like was on yeah, his own. Yeah, since the week. Since the week. We don't talk about <laughs> the, the week. The week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and any big enjoyment out of Sunny screaming all the way over the entire time. Like the the she the only breaks she takes are to inhale. The screams are like half crying <laughs> as you're halfway to the the mountain. Uh, the the moment when the haste runs out and people just overcome with his sudden. Absolute <laughs> exhaustion. Like it feels like for a moment you fell asleep, you fell asleep on the wheel, uh, <laughs> and like the moment you're jolted awake by this like bit. panic. Yeah, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're jolted awake by this panic, and then you're energized again by by Aaron's spell. But that moment, at that moment, Sunny wasn't the only one screaming. Uh, it took all of you a little bit by surprise. You knew it was coming, but it was just this sudden drop, and then you fly upward again. You you all get ready for the second drop, which is a lot more gentle. Pontifex softens it. And at this moment, you're just gliding as far as Pip's wings can take you, just straight forward at a bit of an angle. And in much less time than would have been needed, um, gliding downward until you're still a small ways away from the tip of the mountain, but you're near the top. You find a spot where you can land. Uh, roll an athletics um, check for me. I make it acrobatics, actually. It feels more acrobatics. Uh, what are my stats? It's. Oh, fuck! You're right! Uh, I don't have a sub block for this, obviously. <laughs> use yours, it's fine. I'll just use mine. Uh, it's merely for fun. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, it's a crash landing. Just, like, you'd, you'd be able to do this. If Wait, you how didn't do I slow have, down? <laughs> if you didn't have so many people on your back, like this is more weight than even at your size, um, you can comfortably carry. Uh, and so you arrive 
on terrain that is... Uh, you, you were trying to find it somewhere flat, but you missed the part where you wanted to land. You end up uh, against this much more sloped part of the mountain and at much higher speed than you meant. And you just crash into the snow. For you, it's a soft landing, but everybody else gets flung in every direction. Sunny is lost fur further down. She, as you're, You all find each other, but you can't find her. And that's because she didn't move. She just... You find her exactly where she landed, just up, face down, trying to calm down from one of the scariest moments of her life. Brooke has to pick her up and just pull her up to her feet. Laughing while doing that. Come on, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> She's You've crying. been through worse. You're, you're, you're having a laugh. She covers her face in shame and she's like crying for the most part laughing a little bit at herself and then crying again oh god i take her in my arms when she's up <laughs> still shackling a little bit <laughs> what is this game <laughs> oh. and by the time sunny has recovered <laughs> you look up and uh, the rest of you see something that Pontifex has seen a minute earlier. The first person to spot it and he has had his gaze on it the entire time. And that you are above the clouds and are, now that you are on the mountain, you've, you've landed uh, a bit more on the side of it compared to the direction you were coming from. There is smoke. You can see where it's coming from because it is behind the mountain compared to where you are further higher up that's definitely smoke it nudges professor pontifex with his beak gazes up towards the smoke i, I know i see it what? right that's what i thought too Hip, you, you know I don't speak Ludorian. Oh. I'm only hearing the second half of your bird noise, which is the best <laughs> part. <laughs> Brooke can the translate. What the Baxter, you, you know I don't speak Spanish. Actually, I think I can only speak to animals, but not understand them. Oh, you're right! <laughs> oh, you're right, yeah, animals, we brought it up a bit Oh, yeah. Pip just uh, cocks his head back and forth and starts bobbing it up and down and then uh, takes little little bird hops uh, up the mountain flaps wings well I don't know what he's saying but from his movements we should go up there Go, teacher. This is your moment. Okay. Here I, uh, here I go. And he's gonna start traipsing that way at his leisurely speed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the rest of the party's following? Mm-hmm. Of course. Yep. But you naturally end up giving him a bit of uh, a head start. You keep a tiny bit of distance from him. You all have to slow down because Pontifax's pace is slower than all of yours. <laughs> but you let him. Partially, it's so that you can just work through the nerves and the anxiety of what you have just done. It feels almost like a dream. For a moment, you wonder if it's even real. The idea of this giant stone staircase showing up out of nowhere. Giving you a shortcut up the cursed mountain, the most dangerous place in all of Ladaria. You've been <laughs> warned over and over that attempting to climb it would definitely bring you to your doom. And yet, here you are. In a way, it feels almost like it was destined. At least, that's the only logical way you can describe the way you're feeling. 
you're up here at the top of the broken rib. It's indescribably cold. You make your way up and up. There's nothing, no, no plants here, no animals, just snow, just rock and snow. Up until flowers, small garden, wood, wooden wall, roof, small house, smoke coming out from the chimney. Up here where nothing else lives. Somebody lives here. Uh, yeah, you don't see anyone. Approach, you yeah. just see the, the house. Nobody's outside. You approach the door and it's... It's all normal. He's gonna look back at his... Uh... And his friend group that are now standing on the front. I don't know if I should call this a lawn, but. You know, the door could be trapped. I, I, I could, it could knock and just explode and kill us all, you know? We could. Uh... Go. Fine. No, dilly <laughs> dally. <laughs> knock on the door. Did Tekka just say no dilly dally? <laughs> 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 He's Rich had a like day, that. all right? <laughs> <laughs> I just never thought we'd hear him say those words. <laughs> I'm so happy. No more poetry. Knock on the damn door. Up here, where there is no other noise outside of your own footsteps, your companions catching up to you, the sound of your fist against the wooden door so loud. It's like thunder. It rumbles in your head. You pause. You're perfectly still. Your companions behind you, they hold their breath. There's a sound of something falling, something hitting the ground, an item dropped against the floor. And then footsteps. Quick, in a very fast succession, somebody running. The door slams open. A man stands before you, Pontifex. Skin blue like yours. Black hair braided. Eyes that recognize you. You've only seen them in, in a dream. Something, a face that should be the most familiar to you. The face of a parent. And yet it is something that you only recognize. That you don't have that connection to. That emotional attachment that normally you should have. You're pulled into a hug immediately by this stranger. By your father. Hi, Dad. That sounds weird. Hey, Pontifex. You made it. Who names their child Pontifex? He laughs. <laughs> And we'll end the session there. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. The first question. Why did you name me this? <laughs> Are you crazy? What a ridiculous <sighs> name. <laughs> it must have really had high hopes for me. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Well, that's Matt, gonna be a do. Yep. Thank Austin because that role, <laughs> that role led you here. Oh, the ladder. <laughs> yep, you would what? not be here for a long time still. 
What were the odds? One in 100. One, one, one. He was just one. He was just the 100. Oh, uh, my goodness. At this point, I'm just, just going to tell you. It just makes a big-ass staircase. That's all it does. I, I Okay. Uh, would you like me to... Like, I, haven't, I have never given you, like, exactly what the bag does. Because, like, for fun. You know, but well, if you yeah, want, I, I can tell I you, like, exactly. I don't want to know the options. <laughs> all right. Well, um, it's not about... Unless... Okay, okay. All right, all right. But yes, it's it was literally just on a roll of 100. I mean, are they... Are they all one ofs or most are of them? No, 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 no. All of them are ranges. Oh wow! <laughs> They're all ranges so, except one and one hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the special wow. rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! The specific time and location, for right? Me too. Right, like the. <laughs> In what other? <laughs> In what other circumstance would that have been this useful? <laughs> Any other time, I probably would have led. It would have probably led you to like um, uh, where dragons live. Right. I guess right. you could like yeah. get to meet them, but like in this particular moment, it was like, well, I guess to the that's top. yeah. Oh, Shortcut. and like you, you figured out also how to like jump off of that, which I thought was really fun. Wow. And right after the Talon's Reach stream, too, it's just like all these yeah, things going all together. All those things had to happen <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> what a D&D &D moment. <laughs> wow. Oh, great uh, Good job. Well done. Yeah, well done. Well done. We just... How many, <laughs> how many sessions of content did we just skip? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, buddy. It's okay, I've had this mountain prepared. This is one of those locations that I prepared from, like, the start. Oh, no. <laughs> what I mean, we avalanche? still... This is yeah, bigger. Avalanche. This is bigger than skipping Orm's uh, dungeon, the tower. Oh. <laughs> but... I feel kind what of What a bad. story. <laughs> it's just... What we... a thing. At the very least, we do still have to go under the mountain at some point. Yeah, and you know, like, it's... There's every once in a while there. in a game where dice rolls are involved, every once in a while just something very unexpected happens, and I thought it was... I mean, not to punish you for it. <laughs> wow. <sighs> okay, then. I hope that by next, by next session I'll be able to figure out what happened with these dots. I don't understand. <laughs> they cannot be raised. We Why are they higher up do... than the rest of the table? Might have to do a blank slate. The turd. <sighs> Start the palette the over. Aw. Like Fresh canvas. Jory comes back and her drawings are gone. I don't know. Maybe this just like, maybe this needs to be reloaded. And then maybe this will be erasable. Maybe it's already gone. And we don't even know. Right, right. That's what I mean. Like, maybe just tabletop sim needs to be reset. Mm-hmm. But yeah. That can fix a lot of weird stuff. On that... Like I remember uh, whenever we had the measuring tool was just going crazy all the time. That's right. We just had lines everywhere that no, that some people could see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> that was your fault, too. <laughs> <laughs> that was also my fault. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. And, uh, uh, Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, do we not have Sid next week? No, me. No. Aww. I okay. mean, <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's fine. That's fine. We'll miss you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll follow yeah. along. I'll try to follow along. As for the rest of you, I, I will see you next week. Yep. Goodbye, everyone. Enjoy your week. Adios. Bye. Bye. Bye.